It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley are here. They're actually uh, coming in live from Vegas where they're at a big conference. They're going to talk about Surface Book. Actually, I'm going to talk about Surface Book because I have lots of questions. We've also got a breakdown of Microsoft's quarterly numbers and lots more information about Windows and Windows 10 and Windows Phone and all that stuff. You stay tuned. Windows Weekly is coming up next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly, episode 437, recorded Wednesday, October 28th, 2015. UTC doesn't change, but we do. Windows Weekly is brought to you by the Ring Video Doorbell. With Ring, you can see and talk to anyone at your door from anywhere in the world using your smartphone. It's like caller ID for your home. Right now, get free FedEx shipping when you go to ring.com slash www. And by Wealthfront. Wealthfront is a low-cost automated investment service that is the most sophisticated way for you to invest your money. Whether you've got millions or you're just starting out, visit Wealthfront.com slash Windows to sign up and get your free personalized investment portfolio. That's Wealthfront.com slash Windows. And by ZipRecruiter. Are you hiring? With ZipRecruiter.com, you can post to 100-plus job sites, including social networks, all with a single click. Screen, rate, and hire the right candidates fast. Try ZipRecruiter with a free four-day trial now at ZipRecruiter.com slash Windows. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we cover, cover the latest uh, news from Microsoft with two of the most prestigious, most informed, the scoopiest of Windows press. <laughs> Yep. You are Scoopy. Scoopy Doo. It's uh, and today from Las Vegas, Paul Thorat of Thorat.com, Mary Jo Foley of All About Microsoft.com. And despite well, appearances, they are actually in the same room, but they've I hate to interrupt this, but yes. I was just served chocolate covered strawberries, so I'll be oh, right back. Oh god, are you living the life? You are having fun. You're there for the IT dev intersection, right? Mm-hmm. That's a conference uh, Richard Campbell uh, I guess somehow involved with. Uh, somehow. Somehow. <laughs> Unless he didn't come yeah. back from Africa. Yeah. I think he's there. Uh, no, he's here. Yeah. I just saw him this morning. Okay. And uh, yep. you're, you're doing a panel in about two hours, so we'll, we'll get through this That's quick. Right. Um, but anyway, great. Did you have fun? I mean, I got in super late last night, so you have to talk to Mary Jo about that. <laughs> you like your so room, far, though. So far, so good. Yeah. Yeah, Apparently, our rooms are amazing. There's a swimming pool yep. bathtub. There yep. it is. Yeah. Two bathrooms in this room. Yeah. The MGM Grand, I think, must have recently got renovated because when we stayed there as a Ziff Davis hotel, well, first of all, it was famous for having 5,500 rooms yep. in one hotel, which is like, what? right, right. And it is, you're right, a mile and a half from the entrance oh. to the back. <laughs> what's what's yeah. great about it is there's a map and it says you're here and you got to get here. But the way to get there is you go, do, 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 do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, I'm not yeah. saying it's like 1.5 miles or anything, but it's Might pretty be. far. Yeah. yeah. That's nice. Do they still have the uh, Emerald City Bar with the flying monkeys and, and all of that? Hmm. No, they don't. They that. took that out, I think. Okay. That was, <laughs> <laughs> I was telling you before they're, the show, they're... Ziff Davis had a deal and uh, we would always stay at, during Comdex at yep. uh, the MGM Grand. Uh, mm -hmm. And they had like a 10-year deal, and we knew this was where we'd be staying for the rest of our lives. Pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Are, you in, feel like are yeah. you in the tower? Are you in the tower? Are you in the Yeah, we're in the, yeah. the yeah. towers. Tower. Yeah. Tower one. Tower of terror, yeah. some call it. Mm. Uh, oh, nice. Don't worry. That hotel hasn't burned down in years. <laughs> it's mm. okay. Well. <laughs> yeah, you, can, you can almost not smell the smoke. <laughs> yeah. No, it was a different building, actually. It was way down the yeah, strip, yeah. the old MGM. This is I, – I, I, uh, I'm glad to hear you're – you're being treated like the superstars that you are. So. I, I actually feel like I'm being treated more than I deserve. I, uh, <laughs> this is very strange. Nice. I, I'm glad. Yep. I'm glad. Um, just was telling them before the show, got my Surface book on Monday, fell in love by Tuesday. It's mm -hmm. all over by Wednesday. No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, uh, I'm really happy with it. It's the fit, finish, 
the way it's made, uh, the the things yeah. it does, um, it's just it's just sweet. The I'm way fearing. it does the things it does. The way it <laughs> do the things it do. And then of course Wired had a great article about yeah. um, how you know the behind the scenes with Panos Panay, kind of confirming something that you guys thought. Well. Well, new. What, what, new. <laughs> but go on. Well, no, no, no. Yeah. I think this is more opinion than fact. But uh, one of the things mm -hmm. that uh, apparently, according to this Wired article, they had a laptop. They've been doing, working on it for years. They had a, a laptop, laptop, but they said it's not enough to do a laptop. We have to do oh, something besides aim at the straight at the MacBook. By the way, <laughs> it was how do we beat Apple? It was how do we beat oh, yeah. Apple? Of course, yeah. uh, of course. And they, but they had to do something different, and that's when they came up with the idea of detaching the screen. And as you've right. pointed out, there's a compromise involved in that. It makes it heavier. It's got its own battery. Yeah. Um, and as but you know, you know what else you see? It's too bad you don't have it there with you, Leo, because oh, when sorry, you look at just at the screen part of it um, and how thin it is compared to a tablet, right? Obviously, mm -hmm. for if it wasn't a screen, if it was just a screen, it would be a lot thinner, but. Um, there's there's computer guts in there, right? It has a CPU, it's graphics, it gets RAM, battery. Um, you're looking at, clearly looking at the next Surface Pro, right? Um, because that thing is thinner than a Surface Pro 4 is today. Oh, interesting. Because a Surface Pro 4 is, is kind of uh, bound by the dimensions of a USB port. Right. Well, they, they could put a USB-C port in this thing, mm -hmm. right? And there's your next mm -hmm. Surface Pro. Mm-hmm. You just need the kickstand. Mm -hmm. Well, yes. I mean, so, but this I, this level of thinness, uh, yeah. it, it, can, it could hold extra battery. It just doesn't because they didn't want it to be top heavy. Um, USB-C port. I mean, there it is. There's your next Surface Pro. Mm -hmm. It's impossible not to think that. Once you sort of hear it and think about it, mm -hmm. you know, it's it, you know that's what it's going to Well, be. that makes me feel good because uh, that means I kind of have a Surface Pro in addition to Surface Book. I just have to detach oh, yeah. it and then it is. Pen works great. Latency yep. is very low. I uh, maybe it's not perfect, but it's pretty good, and I've been having a lot it's of great. fun using yeah. it. Yeah. Um, it comes with a paint program, so you, a really nice paint program, actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yep. So if you're an artist and you want to play with that, it's it's great. And then it also, I was surprised it can't. It doesn't have any junkware, right? This is Microsoft, right. so it's like a signature PC, mm -hmm. right? Um, but it well, did they give you a couple of apps that are designed did. for the pen. Yeah, like the PDF but, but, app, which I really like. And, that, and specifically, not because we don't really need a way to see PDFs, but this is a way you can draw in PDFs. So that's a that's not okay. trialware. That's a, f yeah. a free app. I believe so. This is the Drawboard PDF drawboard, yeah. application, and you can use it as a PDF reader. Mm -hmm. yep. and, yeah, if you but, want it, to. but you can annotate with the pen, which is great. Right. I'm just having same a thing class. with the New York Times app. I mean. Uh, the crossword app. I think technically you probably need like oh, a New York Times subscription. I, didn't, to I do. I have a past. subscription. So I can use a pen on that? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah of course. Yeah. That's the point. I'm going home. I have to go back and get my subscription. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's why it's there, right? And, and you have an it's eraser. It's not because they're trying to, you know, they're I not trying to I love the out. eraser. Oh, Apple's yeah. gotten scooped on that one. What's the yeah. paint program? It's not paint net. It's paint. Fresh paint. Fresh paint. Fresh that's paint. it. Yep. So fresh paint, draw board, and the New York Times, those are like the three uh, crossword puzzles. Those are the three kind of yeah. pen apps that they include on there. Mm -hmm. Put Office on it immediately. F fabulous. Yep. Yeah. Um, Screen's beautiful, right? Yep. Oh, Absolutely gorgeous. And I love 3 by 2 I do not mind I that too. aspect ratio. I, this is, I don't know if I mentioned this last week, but this desperately needs to happen because one of the things I've been... I've been using this as my home computer with the dock, and I, I connected it to my big screen and my keyboard mouse, et cetera. Um, I need, desperately need, a 3 by 2 surface display with the same exact pixel density, 267 PPI, as the Surface displays. Because one of the things that's really interesting about Surface Pro 4 and Surface Book is that even though they have different size screens, they have the exact same, obviously, aspect ratio, but also the exact same pixel density. And when you go to, like, a widescreen display, you know, things get kind of messed around by Windows, you know, as it does the little shift there. And depending on how you do it, you can, scale, you can span the displays, replace the displays, whatever. Um, how awesome would it be to go directly from this internal screen to an exact replica, but one that's much bigger, one would have a you know commensurate uh, resolution that was bigger as well. It'd mm. be perfect. Mm. Desperately need this. And the resolution is great, 3,000 by 2,000. Yep. Um, I'm just, I'm, I am totally uh, thrilled. I'm just, yeah. I'm really enjoying this thing. Um, and, uh, in, and you know, I have to say Windows 10 really did fix all of my uh, issues with Windows 8. I know, I yeah. just, because you're in the desktop. 
Even yeah. when, and, uh, but did they eliminate the thing? I remember that uh, when in the in the old days when you went from desktop to tablet mode, it would pop up a thing and say. So well, they've eliminated right, this, that. You this is very well. No, it's very interesting. In, in on Surface Pro Four, actually, I don't know on Surface. I should say on Surface Book, I know for sure. I'm not sure about Pro Four. Uh, it's still there. It's just that it's not enabled by it default. It doesn't do it. It just you stay in desktop, which is fine. That's with me. not the default way that Windows 10 works, and so Microsoft changed that for some reason. Uh, yeah, and I don't quite know mm. why. I, I, I'm going to guess it's a, it's a, it's a big screen. It's a very high resolution screen. It works. They're thinking pro users, IT pros, developers. They're not going to want tablety mode or whatever. So, uh, that's my guess. You can you, uh, just so you know though, you can go and turn that on. So if when you pop that screen off, if you want it to go into tablet mode, that's a feature of Windows 10. You can you still can turn enable that on. it. Okay, good. Yeah, but it's disabled by default. I have so many questions for. <laughs> you guys, because it's it's you know I I use Windows, but not it's not my daily driver. Uh, it will be Leo. I, it you know what, will be. You know what, Paul? I bought the dock yesterday. <laughs> it's awesome, right? I have a spare 4K monitor. I'm hoping it'll work mm -hmm. with that. I think it will. It will absolutely. It will work with two of them. Uh, I'm feeling like this is uh, this is great. They really did a nice job. It, it, Since we've uh, started recording this podcast, by the way, um, someone oh, has come oh, to the door Oh, did you want to record this today? Okay, I'm sorry. Let me start it over. <laughs> no, go ahead. Yeah. Yes. No, since we've started, yes. someone has come to the door twice, and now my phone has rung. Go ahead. You want to answer the door? <laughs> Maybe that's more no, strawberries. I, don't, no. I, I, I really don't, but I'm just amused that they're trying to contact me so much. I don't understand You're what's popular. going on here. It's probably a fire. <laughs> yeah. No, pre press yeah. that do not disturb button next to your door. Yeah, really. Oh, Mary Jo, see, she's got it sussed. She knows she knows luxury hotels. Paul's only stayed I, oh, I do. at places right. like the Yale Club. I'm actually which... sleeping on a canvas bag in the corner. I feel a little out of place. <laughs> that's the, like a, that's like the dog I've bed, a, Paul. I brought like a, a bag full of hay. <laughs> oh. Anyway, um, and I Sorry. and I mentioned this before the show, but I should I should reiterate uh, during the show. I know mm -hmm. you had some issues. Both of you have had issues with the trackpad, uh, reliability issues, yep, things like yep. that, uh, keyboard issues. I haven't had any of those. So, so let me, let me uh, since we're doing Surface, let's, let me provide a quick update on this. Okay. Because, uh, and I'm curious to see what Mary Jo's experience has been. On the i7-based Surface book that I have, it is far more reliable than the i5 pre-production version I had. Ah. I still have occasional things. I will say, if you have a Surface book, I think they're going to fix this stuff with firmware updates, but... Um, anyone who uses a Surface Pro 3, Surface Pro 4 probably, uh, is maybe familiar with this notion of the keyboard stops working and you kind of unclick it and click it back and then everything's fine. Yeah. And, and the Surface Book version of that is detaching the screen and then just reattaching it, right? It's annoying. It works. Um, it, it's much better than it was on the pre-production. I have not unit, had it happen to me at all. I haven't ever. had that happen to me either. Okay. That but must you, be but a firmware fix that they've... But a lot of people are experiencing this. Yeah, uh, yeah they you are. Look online, a lot of people you, you have know. had it. Okay. And it's tough because this is a computer that starts at 1500 bucks, and you yeah, want to kind of nail it. should be experience. perfect. Yeah. Um, I, I do think they're going to get it right. They shipped a bunch of firmware updates uh, yeah, on, the, you, on day one. Did you put those on your... Uh, yeah. uh, well, I, I didn't have to because they sent me... a. Thumb drive, right? Yeah, that had that stuff on it already. Um, yeah. So as I didn't actually. As far as I know, so I got my Monday. I mean, it was, you know, if you ordered day and date, you got it October 26th. I had updates. I don't, I think there might have been one. F like a hardware something. Maybe there was like a firmware, firmware update. Yeah. 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 Um, it's not I, one. I, really I did. I did apply those updates because I didn't get the thumb drive. And I noticed that um, now when I press the detach button on the keyboard for taking the tap, uh, the tablet part off, it yep. is much simpler. I was having trouble. Like I was, it was sometimes detaching, sometimes half detaching. And then now it right. just seems to work much more smoothly than yeah. it did. Yeah. Interesting. Battery so I, life I, I, is really, as you had reported, variable. So yesterday I had yeah. it. Yeah. I was using it on the shows, which means I was using it pretty heavily. Oh, screen was always on four hours. It seems to be smart yeah. about how it uses the battery too, because yeah. if you, there's there's two concerns here. One is that you could detach it, and if if the battery inside the top part had already dispensed, you know, obviously the thing shuts off. Um, the other issue is that if That's the battery's down to a certain percentage, you can't detach it. Right. Uh, oh, it really? won't let you. Okay. Yeah, no, it won't. It, it's a I very don't know if it's weird. Five or Five or ten percent. It's a weird thing because it's two batteries. They're split up, and it yeah. shows you there's two batteries. And it, what it, it does, does is it, it draws down one 
to about right. 30 percent then starts drawing down the other one as well and you're I right had, uh, you can't detach it if you get too low but and for obvious reasons you'd be right. <laughs> cutting mm -hmm. it off yeah. i was taking i took pictures of this as i went but on the flight here i did about six hours in the air and I wrote for about three hours, the Wi-Fi, so I was able to get online. And then I watched uh, some 1080p, uh, a 1080p movie and part of another one. And let me just see what this says because I took a picture of it. So when I arrived, it was 33% uh, battery left. The top one had 32% left and the bottom one was 35%. So actually a little bit on each. Uh, about three hours of life remaining, it says. Yeah. And, um, I also you know, used it that way too, but I, I didn't watch a movie. I just worked for six hours, yeah. and I had. Did you I know what it said? Of, I had about um, thirty odd percent battery huh. left, and I was running Chrome, and I was running TweetDeck, and I was secretly using a mouse sometimes. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> right. So yeah, it was it was great. But then I've also gotten eight or nine hours, uh, effectively right. like the first right. day. So yeah. really, it does a lot depend on how you're using it. Also, by the way, it will depend on whether you have a discrete GPU. Uh, those will not Which get I as good do. battery life. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. That's the right. other, the other uh, thing I noticed is it doesn't charge super fast. Am I wrong, wrong on that? I feel like they the, the, it's the, it looks like the same adapter as the Surface Pro. It's oh. like a low-wattage oh, adapter. Oh, 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 Leo. Let me provide the biggest tip of the world for anyone who owns this device, <laughs> yes. especially people who have upgraded from previous Surfaces, because I almost made this crucial crucial error the power supply for this thing says surface pro on it and it looks exactly like the power supply for surface pro 3 and surface pro 4 it is not it is Ooh. a different power supply Ooh. and if you bring a, the wrong power supply with you uh, it is not going to charge your device Ooh. so uh, i almost it. made it this mistake okay good it won't charge it so, so put a label you're upgrading <laughs> yeah i mean the, the pro, obviously the surface connect pin is exactly the same yeah it, fits. it plugs in it, it lights up yeah it doesn't charge it so oh, wow. uh be careful with that uh if you happen to you know if you're upgrading or whatever because i think a lot of people who do that will say well you know i can reuse some of my peripherals whatever and that's absolutely true or i could you know leave one power thing at home and bring the other one you know right. put it in my bag which is what i almost did i almost came that's, here that's a great tip with the wrong yeah the wrong charger i mean that, again that's not going to impact a lot of people but be careful. So you, you, if you have a Surface Book, make sure you have a Surface Book charger. Maybe want to. Yeah, I don't remember the difference. The, it's a, they it's look a different the same. model number. Yeah, it's a little thicker. It, the model number I just remember because I was looking them up. The, the model number on the Surface Book one is seventeen oh six, and the model number on the yeah. previous ones is sixteen something twenty four or something it's like a that. Lower wattage. Mm. Uh, just yeah. be careful. Yeah, yeah, it's lower wattage. Uh, but the dock it will work. To ch I hope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. The dock is awesome. I haven't written too much about this yet, but that's how. I've been using it at home for the yeah. past, you know, 10, 10 well, days. Well, that's what I think I'm going to do. Do you have a mouse and keyboard or do you? Mm -hmm. You do. I have everything connected to it. Everything. Can you? Now, one thing the MacBook does great is you can keep it closed on the dock. You probably yep, can't. that's exactly you that way. Can. You can. No, you can't. Of course, yep. Yep. Here's another little tip, Leo, by the way, because yeah. I've screwed this up. Yeah. If you use it in this configuration, strongly recommend going to power options and configuring what happens when you press when the power button. Because oh. let me tell you, when you go to, like, it's it's under the monitor and you kind of want to push it back a little bit and you hit the power button by mistake, it turns off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I don't know why it's configured like that by default. Uh, change that. I change it to do nothing when the lid is closed. Oh, that's because good. Because I don't, right? You probably do, do want do it to do that because if you're carrying it or whatever, you don't want to accidentally hit it. It took me a well, while to find to... the power button, by the way. I'm looking all over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's on the top. Well, and then you, you realize all the controls have to be on the screen. They have to be on a, on a, yeah. not just on the screen, but on an edge, right? right? So you can hit, so you can access them when the device is closed as well. Right, right. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm lost. This is going to be the all Surface Book tip episode of Windows Weekly. It is, I know. Well, I'll save if some you, for next week. Do you have a tip week. for tippy Surface Books? That's my. <laughs> it is a little tippy. Yeah. No, I don't. Don't put the screen back so far. <laughs> I mean, you know what's funny that you just said that? I want to put the screen back further I, even. I'm by the way, I do too. It, and right? Yeah. And yeah. Then I know. I push it too, saying, can you go back a little more? <laughs> yeah. Feels like I'm, it should I'm be pushing it back now. I'm, I'm using the camera to record my face and I'm pushing it back yeah. like an idiot. Oh, hello. Um, works great. I know. It's like bing, done. You know when it doesn't work great? Right? When? Bright sunlight. Bright sunlight. Oh, interesting. And when it's dark, on, of course. <laughs> no, when it's dark, it works. It's it infrared. Seems, yeah. Oh. So I used it on the plane in pitch blackness, and it was... Oh, because I've been turning on lights, so I can see... Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's paranormal activity. <laughs> it's really kind so of So this is the ca this special camera, uh, and it has mm -hmm. a weird little light on it, like a Kinect. And, yeah, it's uh, like a red yeah, infrared light. little infrared yeah. thing. It's and a then, privacy light, right? So it tell you when you're recording, isn't it? Or... 
I think that's yeah. the inf that's the uh, am that's the well, it's, infra it's, it's the infrared lightening you up. It's it's part oh, of oh, the, right. yeah, so the facial recognition. Yeah, got it. Uh, but when you open, so when you if you set it up, which I did, and by the way, it, it's not it's like where you put the pin number and all that stuff. It's not like, mm -hmm. and uh, I said, yeah, use facial recognition. I said, okay, smile, and you can improve recognition by putting on your glasses, putting on a hat, combing your hair, uncombing. Yep. So I did. Leo, let me give you another tip. Yes. <laughs> If you wear glasses, as I do, um, do I wake up ways. in the morning. I don't. I don't put my contacts on until yeah. I leave the house. Me too. Or until I'm yep. doing like a podcast or yep. whatever. So, yep. uh, go through that process twice. Once with glasses and once without. And yep. It will work. It will always work. Yeah, it actually tells you to do that. And the, the and yep. it's, so then that doesn't always work, but it works so fast when it works that you feel like you don't have a lock. It just oh, you open it, it up. It, it says hi, Leo. Exactly. The first time it happened, I thought, did I not set yeah. this up with a you know, yeah, and I use a pin, so it's not. If it doesn't work, yeah. it's fine. But it right. works a lot, and it's great. It's, it's like so a finger, fast. and it's yeah. secure, right? I mean, I mean, this is a, mm -hmm. a reliable. Nobody, yeah. they they try twins, you right? You, you can't hold. Yeah, yeah, twins don't work. A photo of you obviously doesn't work. Now, I didn't set it. They, there is a setting if you want extra security that you have to turn your head like this and this. I didn't do that. Right. No, I didn't that's, do that that's either. A pain in the ass. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> 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 I feel like I'm in a lineup. All right, turn yeah. to the left. Turn to the right. <laughs> But it really, yeah, I different. love hello. I love yeah. that. Um, so that's a, that, anyway, I'm sorry. I shouldn't, I shouldn't no, it's, gush. Right. You, you should, you should gush, gush away. I've used Mac laptops for more than 10 years. Uh, by the way, I mean, aside I from Windows, Windows laptops, but this is the best Windows laptop I've ever used. This is incredible. Aside from Windows Hello, though, when you use when I use Mac OS X, and I, we're kind of on opposite end of the spectrum. I don't use it very often, but when I do, one of the things that really irritates me is that you can't use a pin, right? Yeah. And so uh, to sign in, and so one of the things I did in Mac OS X, I thought, well, you know, I'll just use a four-digit password for my user account, and that will be the same thing. Right. Except it isn't, oh. because when you use a pin, you go one, two, three, four, and it signs you in. But on the Mac, you go one, two, three, four. And then you have to hit enter, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you know, because it's right. and I, I I know it's I know people are like thinking this is such a small thing. What are you talking about? But there is a progression of ease as you go from like long passwords to short passwords and pins and, you know, hit Windows Hello being the best. I mean, that little thing where you have to hit enter at the end, like you have to do on Android, right? Is goofy. I mean, on an yeah. iPhone or yeah. not Windows phone, one, two, three, four, you're in. You don't. Why would you have to hit enter? Yeah, no, no I'm with you. It's so strange. <laughs> I'm with you. You're right. In Android, you do have to have a hit enter on. I know, I've never understood that. Yeah. Fingerprint. That's. But we got. You know what? We got used to it uh, with fingerprints, um, and that's really changed how I use a phone. Yeah. Because I. You know, it, it, it makes it hard to go back. You can't. I. Do, I won't. I won't. I won't buy a phone now that doesn't have fingerprints. Yeah. So I mean, look. You, you may use a Mac regularly. I get it and everything. And so you'll use this thing, and maybe you go back to the Mac. But I'm telling you, when you do that, it's the the password thing's going to irritate you. Uh, it, it, it's hard. When you've done this to go back, you know, when you've done Windows Hello, it's really, it's hard. I'm totally with you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do they use Hello? Like, um, you know, when you have a fingerprint reader on a phone, LastPass and other things will use the mm -hmm. fingerprint reader. Have they done that yet with Hello integrated yeah. into uh, more than just the log into the screen? Yep, it's, it's so it's integrated with all the purchase stuff on in Windows. So if you buy content from the store, uh, whatever it is, music, movies, uh, games, apps, et cetera. Um, there's a technology called Windows Passport, which is what brings that technology to the web and to websites and other, you know, third-party apps and all that stuff. And that that is something that's kind of ongoing. So it's not just on, you know, you don't get it automatically with website passwords or whatever, but I think that's something that happens. I mean, obviously, website passwords, are, you could use the built-in stuff that's in Edge or whatever. I mean, I think that would be Microsoft's prescription for now, but the the plan is to for Windows Passport to bring that stuff forward to all the other stuff. So it starts with Windows Hello as your kind of sign in credential, and then you can pass it through the other stuff from there. Do you and you have to have new hardware to make Hello work? I can't use it on this old Dell, old this Dell I got in January. <laughs> that piece of crap. <laughs> yeah. yeah, still using that, huh? <laughs> At first, okay, yeah. here's a funny thing, though. I mean, you could put a webcam on it, but they're right now they're pretty big, you know. Yeah, here's a funny thing. Uh, Surface Book, made by Microsoft. Turn mm -hmm. on Cortana. It says, you know, this microphone isn't really made to work with Cortana, but uh, I'll that? try my best. That's mm. awesome. It's a Realtek it Array mic, and it says, yeah, this is not designed for Cortana. Oh, that's that's got to be a I bug. That's just annoying. Oh, <laughs> it I works. I wonder if... Not very well. I wonder. I wonder 
if that's related to the firmware thing, because, you know, on the pre uh, production units, we didn't have Windows Hello. And, oh. um, right. I wonder if that. Well, I got the related. same message on my Dell, and I was looking forward to having compliant hardware. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't <laughs> seen, I've not seen that message. I'm <laughs> that's sure. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> um, huh. Okay. That shouldn't happen, Leo. Yeah, it works, I guess. You're, us you're using it wrong. I'm doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. Uh, all right. I'm sure I'll think of some other things, but we should save something for future. I love the pen. I probably will use it. I might even detach the screen once in a while. I'm, wow. you know, well, sure. y you pay a price for that screen uh, detaching and it's tippy <laughs> yes, and and stuff. And so I'm going to damn well use it because <laughs> I don't. So I'm, Mary Jo talked about the tippiness. I, I, I haven't found that to be a problem yet. So where does that bother? Or like, where does that hit you? The tippiness. Uh, all the time, pretty much. On desk, okay. <laughs> on my lap. Um, yeah, um, so... Uh, really on desk? Hard, yeah, because sometimes yeah. I don't use touch much, but if I do, maybe I'm just touching it too hard. I don't know. It wobbles. You're, yeah, you're and touching it, feels it like, wrong. Yeah. Then I can grab it because I think it's going to tip over. And sometimes I try to open the uh, lid too far, and then that tips it over. On my lap, yeah. I can't type at all with it no. on. It does make um, it unlappable, I guess. It just falls yeah. right off. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I don't and mind. I find it. I, things, I, I, you know, I it makes you say, okay, they knew that a lot of people were not loving the lack of lapability of Surface Pro. So you, that that to me is one of those things you think, okay, and this one we are going to make this really lapable. And yep. it's funny yep. that it's not because that to me, I, I know I they know. had to make compromises in the design, but it just kind of says to me, did anybody put it on their lap and try it? <laughs> you know, the, because, the, the compromises in the design. Yeah would lead to it being more lappable, it seems to me. In other words, they're not letting the yeah. screen go back very far to begin with. So right. it, that would aid that. You can't I, use it I, on the your problem, lap, though. I can't. You can't. No. No. I, have short, I have short upper legs. It's very strange. No, it's nothing about your legs. It's about the top heaviness <laughs> of this thing. Well, I mean, I think a lot of people in the Surface team would respond to this by saying, but we made the Surface Pro 3 lappable. I don't understand this complaint. <laughs> I know. You know, right? right? I mean, I think that's how they think. So I don't I think I, they yeah. really knew the truth, but I don't know. Yeah. Depends on who you are. I mean, I, I think Surface Pro, some people can use it on their lap just fine. Um, this one, you know, yeah, it's hard. It's just, you can use it if you just want to look at something, like a movie or read something, and you're not touching the keyboard. But once you start to type, that's when it, when it's like <laughs> precarious, <Yeah>. right? <laughs> Speaking of which, I actually on the plane, I, I don't know that I'm going to do this a lot, but on the plane, because the guy in front of me at some point did put his seat back. Yeah. I, uh, it, you know, had moved on to watching movies, so I actually, you know, took it off, flipped it around, put it back down, you know, turned the whole thing around, and, and so now it's kind of, you know, we the screen's in the front here, and, yeah. you know, it kind of fits better in that triangular space, you know, formed by the seat, um, and it works fine, you know, it's it's a little goofy doing the whole, you know, you, you, you pop it off, you flip it around, you pop it back on, you're doing this in the dark, and so it's kind of yeah. hard. And then you have to turn the whole thing around, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So that the screen is now facing front again. Uh, and I discovered in this mode that the uh, the keyboard no longer works, uh, which I guess makes sense because you wouldn't, you know, yeah. be putting your hands behind there or whatever. Have you folded it over so that the keyboard is under it? Have you done that position with it and kind of used it as a as a slightly angled device? Just to. To, you know, just to see what it yeah. looked like. I'm not. I'm, the truth is, I'm never going to sit there and draw on the thing. So, yeah. um, yeah. I'm disappointed. You're an artist. <laughs> but you know what? It, it's um, it's like anything else in life. You've done things a certain way for a long, yeah. long time, and you're it's comfortable get, doing it. Yeah. And I have terrible. I used to have. I, I still have a lot of my high school notebooks and stuff. I had wonderful handwriting when I was a kid. Ugh. And uh, I, right now, it's a chicken scratching doesn't even begin to yeah. describe it. I, yeah. My hand cramps yeah. up writing yeah. a check. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah. I can't do it. I'm um, just trying to think if there's any other any other big thing to mention. By the way, people, if you are in Vegas, you are at the IT Dev intersection. Paul and Mary mm -hmm. Jo are going to be uh, bringing their Surface books to that panel they're <laughs> yeah, doing, kidding. right? I brought it into the speaker lounge this morning. I don't know if you experienced this yet, Mary Jo, but yeah. uh, a bunch of guys were manhandling it, including yeah. um, Scott Hanselman, who made like a little video of him popping the screen off. You know, so. It's Someday fun. when that video appears online, that's my Surface Book that he's nice. doing that. Though. You know, it's so funny yeah. that in the Wired article, Panos Panay kept saying something about clicky, clicky. We don't want clicky, clicky. Like, they made that a joke. Mm. Are they mocking the Themselves? Surface? Yes, the Surface Pro ads. Yeah. Because it sounds know. like they kind of are. 
I, I've always had this theory about this surface and the in the keyboard that that clicky sound was not done on purpose. It's something that just happened by the nature of what they had built, and that they they found it so unique they thought they would make kind it, of focus on it in advertising. It. Yeah. Like I I don't think they you know made it that way on purpose. I think it's it was just you know you have magnets and the things slap together and they make a sound and they're yeah. like huh that makes us you know that that's one way you can tell someone it was a surface. Yeah. It's just a theory. But this makes a little clicky sound. You know, it's kind of hard yeah. to hear sometimes. Yeah. But I love the recorded chunk. <laughs> I know, it's so, I know. So I silly. Do too. It's I like totally it. believable because it happens exactly the same moment that the thing releases yeah. and there's a little physical movement. And so it's mm -hmm. totally, uh, if you hadn't yeah, told me, it. I would, yeah. yeah, I buy it totally. Yep. 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 Not, I have to say the trackpad's okay. It's it's a good trackpad for a Windows. It's not anywhere as good as uh, Apple's trackpads, which yeah, and I I agree with that. I the, yeah. if you've ever used a Mac trackpad, it's it's astonishingly good. And I would just say that among PC trackpads, I would put this one. The Envy, uh, sorry, the Spectre X three hundred and sixty that HP makes is up there. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, ThinkPads are up there. This is it's up there. It's up there. You know. I'm not tempted to get a mouse. You know, I have plenty of mouse mice is lying around, and I'm you know I'm not I'm not saying oh I'm gonna go get a mouse. I might put a mouse on the dock. I don't know. Yet. Mary Jo, do you agree with that assessment? Nope, totally disagree. <laughs> Immediately connects a mouse. Yep, right here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I on the plane right here, I used it with the trackpad, no problem. And I did re graphics and resizing and all this. It was fine. You but did? you know, today uh -huh. sitting at a desk, I I when I got time to do the graphics, I was like, give me the mouse. You know. But it's the track for trackpads. It's a good trackpad. Yep. I have to say, it's I'm the first trackpad on a Windows machine I've ever been able to use at all, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, I'm using yeah. it sometimes. But yeah, still, and it, it supports uh, great uh, gestures if you want to use those. Um, it has uh, a lot of functionality if you go into the settings uh, app and look at you know mouse and, and touchpad. Uh, a lot of stuff in there you can configure on mm -hmm. it. I have to say, having a touch screen makes me not worry so much because i just love it. i can zoom i can i can yeah. swipe i mean yeah the zooming on touch is great it's, oh, it's i think fabulous. that's probably the one reason i use touch oh, it's so great yeah. i like it's just one more language it's just one more right kind of idiom yeah, that and that's the thing I, I, and I love it when this first happened i think a lot of people said oh come on no one's going to replace a mouse no one's going to replace the keyboard and that's not really the point you know right. um it's supposed to be and you it, can it, use everything, right? It's an adjunct. Yeah, you can, you can use any... Con I, I find myself, even in the laptop configuration, if I'm reading an article, I'll pop the thing full screen, reading mode or whatever, depending on the app, and then just flick through it with my finger, you know? Yeah. Um, it, it feels very natural. It works really well. Um, the keyboard and mouse are there. They still work, you know, but, I, you know, I, it's just another thing. Right. It's nice. I like, I like that we have choice. I, I'm glad they yeah. didn't make it so the mouse doesn't work anymore. To try to force right. people not right. to use a mouse. Uh, Although, and, by the way, uh, Mary Jo, if you haven't done this, sorry, Leo, um, you can configure this to turn off the trackpad if you plug in a mouse. Oh yeah, that way you don't get I, any errant I keep swipes. About that. Yeah, yeah, it's worth doing. Mm -hmm. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Mm, I've not heard the fans come on at all. Maybe I'm not doing, really. I'm not doing enough to. You know, it's so random when it happens. Yeah. I can never figure out what is I making think it you happen, guys and it got doesn't happen. production models. Much. I really think. <laughs> well, I don't actually. I don't actually have that problem. You don't. Okay. No. So that that was a big problem. It is still a big problem on Surface Pro Three, um, Surface Pro Four, and Surface Book. No issues. Um, the fan does come on. I mean, um, if you're playing a game, for example, I, I loaded up Far Cry 1080p. The fan kicks in. I mean, there's no way around that. Mm -hmm. um, and in some heavy stuff, like I, I do an initial six, I forget the exact number, 16 to 18 gig download from OneDrive for the mm -hmm. first, you know, 15, 20 minutes of actual downloads that the fan yeah. will kick in because it's using a lot of CPU, a lot of disk access, whatever network probably. Um, but, you know, then it kind of calms down. I, it's not onerous. It was This was a big problem on Surface Pro 3. I don't really see it as a big problem on this one. Good. I don't. Anyway, I guess Mary Jo's having a... No, I, it's not a big problem for me. Uh, but it, it's just, I, I'm always curious when it happens, like, what? why is this happening right yeah, now? Yeah, you almost want to look at, like, show me the thing that's making this yeah. happen, you know, because it's not doing anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and right. that's, surf, that's the yeah. Surface Pro 3 experience, yeah. We're going to talk some about uh, the new builds, Threshold 2. Um, 
There are other things to talk about. And, of course, Microsoft's earnings. It's a cloud company, baby. It's all <laughs> in the cloud. <laughs> to the cloud. Yeah. And why I still get on my Dell, something I have yet to see on my Surface Book, the mm. blue screen of unhappy. Aww. You know, if you were, if you had had the Surface Book a week earlier, you would have seen that because I know. Microsoft yep. updated update them. Yeah. Well, it's one of the reasons I'm very happy. I feel like Windows. So, and I want to turn off the Insider builds on the Dell because uh, yeah. I'm sure that's part of it. But I, I feel like Microsoft's uh, uh, got got kind of got Windows 10 uh, working. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk a little bit about my doorbell. Speaking of working, <laughs> you know what you mm -hmm. should do is you should get this doorbell now before Halloween. The Ring Video Doorbell. Then not only will you be able to see all the ghosties and goalies, or is it ghosties and ghoulies, at your door, you'll be able to scare them by going, What is it? This is the most awesomest thing you can put on your doorbell. If you have a wired doorbell, it's easy peasy. You just unscrew the wired doorbell. You've got two little wires coming out. They give you everything you need to attach the new video doorbell, including drill bits screwdriver, even a level so it looks good. Comes in a variety of different finishes to fit your home. And then when you ring the doorbell, not only does your chime ring as as always inside, but your phone rings, your uh your your tablet rings, and everything running the the app and they have apps for iOS and Android and Windows, everything that ringing <laughs> ringing the app and by the way, even, in fact, it's so funny because when I do this show, my doorbell goes off all the time. I can see who's at the door. I can I can respond to them. I leave the package there. Who are you, strange person? Get away from my yard, whatever. Uh, in fact, this is a great security device because it turns out burglars come during the day when you're at work. They ring the front doorbell to make sure you're not home. When you don't answer, they go around back, break in. And uh, and they're done. Not with the Ring Video Doorbell. You say, yeah, what is it? And they say, eh, never mind, wrong house, wrong number. And they walk away. Uh, I also have motion detection for $30 a year. You can subscribe. And uh, they will record motion outside your door. I can go back in time. I can see when my when my, my, my daughter got her boy, bad boyfriend to drop her off <laughs> 2 in the morning. And I can even see the bad boyfriend. And if, by the way, I happen to be up, I could say, hey, hey, get out of here. So I'm just loving it. I can't wait to play with it this Halloween. If you'd like to get a Ring Video Doorbell, we got free FedEx shipping. So you, you probably can get it by Halloween if you go to ring.com slash WW. Ring.com slash WW. Connects to your Wi-Fi. Works great. No, by the way, if you don't have a wired doorbell, it still works because it's got a lithium-ion, year-long lithium-ion battery inside. So you get all the benefits of the Ring doorbell, even if you don't have a doorbell. Oh, I love it. Ring, one of the top 10 gadgets of 2014, according to Time Magazine. Ring.com slash WW. Get your Ring video doorbell today. Paul Thorat, Mary Jo Foley, they're in Vegas for the Dev IT Dev Intersection Conference. And they'll be doing a panel shortly, so I want to make sure that we, uh, we move promptly through this i am on build 10565 is that right is that the current build still i believe it is yeah they have an update yep. they did you got on the plane and they didn't update windows what a i know shock. what happened <laughs> shock yeah i ga actually gabe apologized for that i told him that i was <laughs> flying on friday as well uh, so there's still a chance yep <laughs> uh, we are getting close to threshold two being official and pushing out right mm -hmm. that's probably what the hold is right they want to put one last update right, out right 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 the, the goal well yeah at least one i guess we'll see i mean i people have been asking me this week you know do you think we're done do you think that we've already seen the final bill and it's like i never okay I, you know i guess i don't know i you know it seems like we have time for one or two more uh before well, you know this we, november when release that's coming. You know, november it could be november 30th i mean when they're not gonna do it for thanksgiving are they when are they gonna do it well, the, yeah, rumor, sometime in the November. rumor is November 2, right? Like, that's the rumor we Yeah, keep but here. I don't... That seems early to me. Does that yeah. seem early to it you? Has an, it hasn't RTM'd yet. I as, as of yesterday, I'm basically sure. So, I, I think that it's not quite done yet. Um, right. So, um, I, I, yeah, I don't, we don't know the exact timing. I, I do think it's going to happen within the calendar month of November, but... Um, I did receive some information about this update and how they're going to 
deliver it, what it's going to be called, and how they're going to differentiate. Because remember, you know, we're just on Windows 10 now, right? And, you know, there's not going to be a Windows 11, supposedly. And so, right. but we still need some way to differentiate different releases because there's the RTM release, which they don't call the RTM release. And then this TH2, you know, the Threshold 2 type release is coming out in November. And, you know, how do you differentiate these things? And so, Leo, actually, if you're running, you're running that uh, 535 build or whatever, 565. Yeah, 565, yeah. So um, if, uh, do, how do I say this? Uh, Windows key plus R for the run dialog. All right. And then type Winver, W-I-N-V-E-R. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then the About Windows box will come up. Okay. And what you should see there is it will say version 1511. That's right. That stands for 2015 November. Oh. And, that, and that's the Threshold 2 release, which uh -huh. they're going to market as the Windows 10 fall update. Um, and they're going to use this naming convention with other products. Uh, we'll be talking, or Mary Jo, I think we'll be talking about System Center soon, and they'll be using it there because these things need to be kept kind of in lockstep. And so this is how we're going to tell the different versions of products that will no longer have version numbers associated with them, you know, to the general public. But there really are, of course, version numbers and build numbers. And those things still exist, and this is how they're going to do it. And so uh, this will be the way we'll be able to tell these things apart. Yeah, because I, you know, I couldn't figure out on the Surface Book what the heck I had, but now right, I know Winver right. Command Run Winver. Yeah, and so I actually I still have I, I reset this thing on Monday because Microsoft sent out a disk, and so when you look at the RTM version of Windows 10, what it says there is version 10.0. Huh. Yeah, right. So you know, I guess if they had come up with the system earlier, it would have said 1507 or whatever. Um, so. Yeah. There you have it. This is how we, there you go. Threshold tool. Yeah. And is there any more news about what it will be or is we, it's, is well, it, I mean, you know, most of it, things. no, no, there's a bunch of new features. I mean, remember what you're seeing in the, in the Windows Insider program are, are new things, right? There's some color scheme yeah. changes, uh, new Cortana features, new edge features. Uh, and there's some other stuff. There's a new version of the media creation tool coming. Uh, Microsoft hasn't highlighted this too much, but remember that every quarter or whenever they release these kind of updates, uh, they will be refreshing their online-based media for Windows 10. So, in other words, if you run, if you download Windows 10 from Microsoft today, you're getting the R10 version, and then you run a couple of updates, and you're, you know, you're up to date. If you download this thing after November. You won't get the RTM version. You'll get the 1511 fall update version, right? right? And that's how they're going to, you know, they're going to make sure they keep this thing evergreen uh, as they move forward. We do know now, I believe, I, I believe it's safe to say enterprise data protection is going to make it into threshold two because uh, another item under this on our notes is about Intune, which is Microsoft's right. device management service. And if you look at what's in this month's Intune update, they mention enterprise data protection policies get added. So uh, I, that to me says enterprise data protection is one of those things that will make it into into threshold two. And and what that is, is it I, that's the capability that isolates your personal data from corporate data to help prevent data leaks. So uh, one of those features businesses really wanted that didn't make it into the first version of Windows 10. Right. And then I, we should say there's stuff that's not going to make it in. So, for example, we found out this right. past week for sure <laughs> that uh, extensions for Edge are not happening until next year sometime. Right. Microsoft has said that officially for people who didn't notice. Yeah, um, you mentioned that last yep. week. Bum me out, man. Because I actually like yeah. Edge. I want to. I use really it. like I'd Edge, like to, especially I like to use it, especially on a device like this on a Surface Book um, or any high DPI screen. I would imagine just yeah. they just do something right with the the text and graphics rendering. It's just uh, mm -hmm. it's a really nice experience. Yeah. But mm -hmm. yeah, the extension thing is tough. There's just one or two that I, I think I'd want to have before I could ever use it. Now, don't yell at me. Mm -hmm. But I did change the DPI. I changed the... Uh, you did? Yeah, so they recommend 200%. Yeah, what did you change it to? 250. Oh, 250. That's interesting. Okay. A little I, bit I, I bigger. bigger. It's because of yeah. touch. Yeah. It's because I want touch targets to be just a little yep. bigger. And I'm old no, and checks. I want to be a little bigger. How does it look? Is it nice? You know, I'm, I'm, I feel like it, some things... It look they look scaled, but that that's a good example. Edge doesn't. Edge looks yeah. beautiful. So some I have things wasted a lot of time it. on this, doing this kind of thing, because mm -hmm. there's the there's the high level change you can make where it's big chunks. You know, you go from 200 to 250, right? And then you can get into a, a more complex control panel where you can actually 
on a ruler Budget. kind of specify. Yeah. yeah. And I got, I've spent a lot of time on that. <laughs> Don't you, you <laughs> want to, you want to use the screen at a native resolution, which of course you can't yeah. at a three by two, a uh, 3000 right. by 2000 screen. It's just so high resolution. Everything can be tiny. So right. they do, they're doing what Apple does. They, Apple calls it high DPI mode where you run it doubled. Uh, yeah. Or ha yeah, so you use twice well, as. That's why two hundred percent is ideal. Yeah, you, because you know, as far as that scales scaling. nicely and easily. But I think the right. scaler they're using is doing a pretty good job, even at two fifty. I should probably go back oh, yeah. to two hundred. Yeah, and, and and if for some reason you wanted to use one fifty, I think you would find the same. Yeah. It would actually look great. Yeah. I I couldn't see it at that scaling, but no. Well, that's the problem. The stuff's too small. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it sure looks good though. What a great screen. What a great even. Yeah, it is beautiful. Just, it is really nice. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And uh, on Threshold 2 also, uh, we think Business Store will be in there, which is the uh, the store that will let businesses sideload their own apps so that they mm -hmm. don't have to be in the main store. Like if you have private apps, you yeah, just want your sure employees. Yeah, that happens a lot yeah. in big enterprises. Yeah. It does. And then uh, OneDrive, the new uh, OneDrive Sync client is supposed to be out this uh, in the fourth quarter. So it's not right. technically part of the OS, right? But it, But I think that will be along with Threshold 2. Yeah. Hmm. Hey, I've forgotten about that. Hmm. What's going on with that? Aren't they testing that? Yeah, they are testing But it's not public, is it? Is it? I think it's, yeah, it's public. I've kind of, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, because of the way they've screwed up OneDrive and Windows 10, um, I, I, I find it very hard to use day to day. I, I use it for archive. Yeah. But I do a lot of my actual day to day work. I just use Dropbox because it just works so fast, you know? I really hope they get this one right. I have I've kind of stopped looking at it. I just I mean I, I pour stuff into it just to get rid of it, and I don't care how long it takes to sync. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah, it's too bad. I should probably be doing that too. Yeah, just, you should be testing because I have unlimited. Well, I have unlimited, <laughs> right? Because I'm subscribing to Office three sixty. Do you though? Do you? <laughs> I know, not really. Does not any kidding. does anyone really have? Unlimited? No, no one does really. Right? Well, it's a terabyte, <laughs> but maybe two, whatever issue. Sure. Yeah, but then terabyte. I just, pretty, just get more terabytes. Close. Do, yeah. do you? Don't you? <laughs> Has anybody filled it up? I mean, is it possible to fill it I, up? I, I have gotten more than a terabyte, yes, yeah. by pumping a bunch of data into it. I have not gone beyond whatever they gave me. I'd have to look it up. I don't know if it was five gigs or something, or five terabytes or whatever, but it's an awful I think, lot. I think they've said publicly, yeah, we know we said unlimited, and we're working towards that. Yeah. Here's what people want, and, and seriously, because no one's going to use it. They just want to see the thing say unlimited. All they have to do is change the web page. Right. That's really all you they know? have to do. It really is. It, right now it says one terabyte and it freaks people out. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm paying this thing for yeah. a year to get unlimited storage. You know, I've got 533 megabytes of stuff and I want my unlimited storage. <laughs> you know, and I, I it's, it's I, honestly, I think yep. they could solve most of the problems by just changing what it says. I don't think anyone would even notice. Yeah. Mm. yeah. If they're going to bump it up as you go, what's the difference? What does it matter? <sighs> can we talk some more about my Surface Book? No, all right, we won't. <laughs> Leo, yes, we yes. can. Did you mention Intune? I mean, I know you... Yeah, yeah. I mentioned Intune, but, but we didn't talk about System Center configuration. Oh, after. yes, I saw that, yes. Yep. So this is actually pretty interesting and kind of predictable, I think. So Configuration Manager also is going to be a service now, just like Windows and Office are. So... Uh, Microsoft put out a blog post this week. They said, we're going to be updating Configuration Manager the same way we do Windows and on the same schedule, which means regular updates feature-wise. <laughs> which means unreliably. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So Configuration Manager as a service is a real thing, and it's coming Yay. soon. By the way, a couple and they're going to kind of tie it. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Keep, 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 keep yeah. going. I'll, I'll, I'll. Oh, I was just going to say, that, I mean, they're going to tie it to the Windows 10 yeah. release schedule, it seems like. So, they, you yeah, know, as Windows like 10 is released, they're going to update uh, uh, System Center and presumably Intune, I guess, as yeah. required. Intune is sort of now part of System Center, right? It's not even its own right. thing. It's it's sort of a perk of System Center, as I understand it. pretty much integrated now, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. They're going hand in hand for the most part. Yeah. Um, can I ask you a dumb question? Mm-hmm. <laughs> How do I log out of Windows? Do, do I have to hit Control right, so you, Alt Delete? Do I really have to do that? Is there no it's, uh, it's start the, menu? No. Click on your user at the top left, and then this oh, because I would go to Power, and it says Sleep Shut Down Restart. It used to all be in the same. I don't it know. should be there. I see. I could. It's Sign I Out User. That. that makes sense. Okay. Sure. They ran, they probably didn't have enough uh, letters in the letter box to have it in I, both I, places. I, I, I think it was logical enough. 
I, I, I you know, it, you could make the argument that those are not power options. Yeah, and that's you're fair. logging out of the yeah. user. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But All right. whatever. Now I know. Once you know, is it? It's this is not unusual, and and there's so many features and stuff. And <laughs> so if you really were paying attention during the Windows Insider program and didn't have a lot going on in your life, you could have tracked the number of times they changed where this thing was in the UI. It's actually pretty <laughs> funny. yeah, that's true. They're you know. they're debating it too, apparently. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, and I remembered from the old days, control alt delete. So I just did that. That works. Yeah, that works. Mm -hmm. If you just want to lock the screen, uh, Windows key L. Don't do it now, Leo. Uh, we'll, <laughs> <laughs> we'll lock the screen. Actually, you can do it now. It doesn't really matter. No, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at a different one. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, firmware updates for Surface. Well, wait a minute. We talked about that, didn't we? Yeah, we, we? already yeah, got yeah. that one. We, we did Surface first. Uh, we moved yeah. it up. Yeah. Okay, let's get to earnings. Uh, the conclusion that mainstream media uh, came to, beside, after noting that Microsoft's stock price was the high, highest it's been since the year 2000. I know, 15 yeah, years. Crazy. Is yeah. that uh, the Microsoft's, well, first, and that Bing made money, which I read what? on Mary Jo what? Foley's. She yeah. said they made a billion dollars. Is she That's wrong? Revenues. Re revenues. The, the re revenues. Oh, revenue. They, right, but, but they, they didn't lose money. Nope. They, this was the first quarter, I think, it, since 2006, Profitable. Seven, Profitable quarter, they right? They earned something. We don't know what they earned. But oh, they didn't yes. say how much it was. It was 1187. Profitable. They didn't they put okay. into petty cash. Okay. <laughs> they didn't. They didn't. Yeah. I get it. All right. They're no All longer right. Anyway, I, I, losing I, Before money. Mary Jo will have a lot to say, I'm sorry, I, I, about the earnings, but I, I just, it really bothers me how they don't report anything anymore. They'll give you little factoids about each business that has nothing to do with what we want to hear. Right. You know, right. surface you grew by some percent or yeah. fell by some percent, but they don't tell you how many they sold. Or in this case, you know, Bing was profitable. Oh, that's great. By how much? I mean, we're not saying that. We don't know that. You know, I, I find that to be, I just find that to be bad. I, I'm surprised it's even allowed, frankly, but I, I, I find that to be very strange. Every well, uh, company hides hides things in their oh, earnings. But they're hiding everything now. In other words, you could look at any little part of the business and point out yeah. something they're hiding by virtue of the fact that they're only telling you something that looks like good news. And it's it will be something bizarre. It will be some some little, <laughs> you know, trend or something right. that has nothing to do with financials. Uh, and uh, I don't know. The way they've split up the businesses now, there's no real way to know. Right. Now, now there's only three reporting segments. So everything is in those three, right? You can yeah. hide a lot of things anyway, that way. Sorry, it's good. sorry, just a you know, no, usual, usual ranting. I don't know. And, but the the top line on all of this was uh, the cloud has been very, very good to Microsoft. Yeah, they're doing well, <laughs> sure. they're doing well. They're doing well. Yes, Cla so that's in fact why the stock price was up. And the Wall Street analysts were looking f to see can Microsoft actually find a way not to be so dependent on Windows and also on devices, right? Because that's that's the part of their business right now that is the biggest revenue-wise. So they're looking for future indicators. They're saying, you know, what can they actually make a, a shift where they're go, making money from the cloud and making money from Office and Office 365 and all their enterprise products? And the answer is yes, they can. They, it looks like they can. So that's why their earnings were so good. Also, they had some layoffs as well. And you know, we don't like hearing that. Microsoft employees don't like hearing that. Uh, but Wall Street loves hearing that. They love <laughs> hearing their By the way, also notes. not announced as part of the earnings. Uh, no, they were not announced as part of the earnings. I, you know, I, but uh, Again, I, this whole thing, I find it to be very strange. Right. So they, they laid off some number of people. We don't know what that number was. Um, they, they wouldn't say. They said it was across all business units. So it, this was in addition to the more than 8,000 people they already announced they were laying off this year that were mostly in Windows Phone. Yeah. So the, all those kind of things are what analysts like to hear. Oh, they're tightening the belt. They're, <laughs> you know, cutting costs, right? It's and so warped. I know. That's why their stock price went up. Oh, well. Yeah. But anyway, um, I, I thought the, the cloud news was really interesting and really good. Uh, we don't really know how much they're making on Azure Still, we don't. They don't break the numbers out that way. They talk about cl the intelligent cloud, which incorporates a lot of different things. And so everybody wants to compare AWS to Azure. We don't know what that number is for for Azure. Uh, there, we can guess. We can make some kind of broad 
broad guesses, but like Paul said, they give you a percentage. Like Azure was up 200% or whatever, and 200% yeah. of what? We don't know. Right, right. Uh, Office 365 still doing really well. I think they're up to 65 million seats for commercial, which is the business version now, which is pretty huge. Uh, I forget what the number is they're up to in the consumer version for Office. Do you do you remember, Paul? Office oh, boy. No, I don't. No. I'm sorry. There were just so many numbers all at once, but yeah. Um, well, and it's, they just, also, it's, again, you know, it, it, you kind of don't know what to compare them to. That was the now, problem I had with it. You know? Right. They're also no longer reporting how many Xbox consoles are sold. Um, they're not giving that number out anymore. I don't know if you noticed that. I, that, by the way, is the biggest problem I had with this. The, seriously, we're not going to beat PlayStation. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to stop talking about how many we sell. <laughs> right. I mean, that was literally what that was, right? So they're yeah. going to talk about engagement of people on Xbox Live, which, you know, is, is, is in its own right interesting. I mean, there's no right. doubt about it. Yeah. But what this allows them to do, it, it's sort of like in the old days, they would say, at the old days, meaning like a quarter ago or two quarters ago yeah. or a year ago, they would say, in the quarter, Microsoft sold some number of Xbox consoles. But they wouldn't tell you which were 360s and which were Xbox Ones. Now we're not even getting that information. Now what they're going to talk about are people that are on Xbox Live. Because, you know, this is something that is going to grow. Do you know why? Because of Windows 10. Right. Because if you think about it, over the entire, whatever that was, 8, 10 year life, uh, life cycle of the Xbox 360, approximately 80 million units were sold. There are 20-something million people on Xbox Live. Well, they just sold 110 million or got 110 million people on Windows 10 in two months, three months, whatever that was. There's going to be a lot more people on Xbox Live because it's built in now. Right. And that's, you know, so this is, another, again, it's it's about yeah. obfuscating what's really happening. And I, I you know, I, it's, it's relevant. I, don't get me wrong. I, the number of people using Xbox Live is relevant. But it, we're also, while doing that, hiding what's really happening with the Xbox One. And I, I, I just wish it wasn't that way. Paul, no good can come of telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> yep. When that's, uh, by will the way, you learn? That's why it says that in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that makes sense. That's the Old Testament. No good <laughs> yes, has yes. ever come from telling that's the, the uh, truth. That's from the vengeful God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it really is yeah. true that a company, uh, and I think a lot of companies, Apple probably leads the way on this, have, have companies have learned that uh, anything you say is going to be held against you. So just say nothing. What really I found confusing is the new, the, 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 the way they divided this, the three groups they divided it up mm -hmm. into. I mean, that's just talk about obfuscation. Oh, it's almost like they had a roulette wheel and they're like, all right, uh, <laughs> yeah, devices. You're in here. And, with oh, where are we going oh, yeah. well, <laughs> Where I, are I we going to put that? Oh, well. It, it was crazy. I don't like it. I don't, you know, I think the thing that bugs me about it at, at the core is that under Satya Nadella, and, and in recent years, let's say, Microsoft has been much more transparent yeah. than they have been in the past overall, Yeah. you know, but they're doing a couple of things that don't make sense to me. One is they, they, they continue to decline to identify what's in updates that they're delivering automatically to people's computers, which I find to be inexcusable. And then this stuff with the financial reporting, it makes no sense. Mm. They, they clearly have designed this so they don't have to tell the truth about what's happening with their business, which is the point of an earnings report. And I, I you know, I just, I, I find it to be dishonest. Yeah. It's uh, too bad. Well, but it doesn't, it, it doesn't hurt them in the market, obviously. No. Uh, and the headlines were all very positive. Right, but this the, the problem is the stock market or Wall Street or whatever you want to say is financial markets. You know, it's it's all about look over here, look over here. You know, know. and it, it it's sort of designed to let companies show what they want to show. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I I don't feel that they should be able to show. This is a public held company; they should be held accountable to what they did, and it should be public information, transparent, all of it. And I I'm kind of amazed that they can hide this level of detail from shareholders and from the public. You idealist. But again, I, <laughs> I, I know, I know, I know. I'm a socialist, or whatever, a communist, or whatever. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Because we, uh, in theory, live in an age of full disclosure. I mean, Sarbanes-Oxley and all of these laws <laughs> that were passed after WorldCom and, and Enron, and, and, and it's right. worse than it used to be. Oh, by the way, 
This is the same company that is fighting the extraction of email right. held in Ireland, Ireland by a U.S. company yeah. to the DOJ. Right. They're make, they're taking a stand on that little issue. You know, <laughs> Look yeah. at, what are you kidding me? Right. I, I know. I just. Well, they're gonna I, lose. I know that. I, I, the they're not. I, yeah, I think so too. But they're, they're not related. Whatever. I get it. But I just. Again, I don't mean to harp on this. I just. It's disheartening every time an earnings report comes out and you get to look at their cherry picked little numbers that have mm. nothing to do with anything. Mm. You, know? mm. you should just be happy. They're doing great. I, well, I'm so, I, so happy. It's going swell. <laughs> this, Leo. You've known me for a long time. This is me being happy. Yeah, I know. This is as happy as he gets. <laughs> this is as good no, no, as he gets. It's not that. I like to be like this. <laughs> um, uh, more layoffs, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, more layoffs. Is that just really adjusting know. for... Uh, you know, they're, 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 it's not just turning the dials. I think he's a great CEO, and he's done a really amazing job turning Actually, his company it, around. <laughs> In sharp contrast to what we were just talking about, I do think the one thing that he's been doing really well is holding holding people and their departments or businesses or whatever yeah. accountable. Yeah. In yeah. other words, he is less likely to let something go on for years and years and be unprofit and be unprofitable. We may never find out how bad it was. We may find out just one day that something disappears. I mean, you know, that's part of the weirdness. But um, he he does seem to require that these businesses be businesses, you know, that they make money. And uh, I do like that. I, mean, I think he's done a yeah. good job. At and that. you lay off uh, business people in divisions that aren't doing well and or that are yeah. redundant. Or Deadwood, that could yeah. be anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how big are the layoffs? Well, uh, New York Times said 1,000 people, although I couldn't verify yeah. that. I, I, I couldn't disagree, but I couldn't yeah. verify it. It's a couple of percentage yeah. points. Attrition probably would do that. Mm -hmm. I would, you know, in the layoffs of days past. Not, uh, by the, the way, I don't want to sound days. insensitive to somebody gets laid off. No, no. Horrible it's thing. It's not, it, right. But, the, I, uh, yeah, and this that's kind of relates to what I was just going to say, which is that I, I always hear from people at Microsoft about how horrible it is. You know, you don't understand, like, these people and this is happening. Oh, it's and terrible. I didn't hear anything like that this time. Um, and it makes me wonder if well, they, they just, were isolated to specific parts of the con uh, company. They um, fired all the people nobody likes. <laughs> <laughs> disagreeable people yeah. Yeah. oh god no. they got rid of him I, thank I god um, one, one person told me they heard uh, con a lot of contractors including in finance and legal might have been among yeah. those cuts yeah good nobody like the, See, the, the, that, the B dash types yeah, or whatever. nobody complains when you fire the lawyers that's not oh, oh they fired the, way, the legal also, department oh also in the bible by the way also in the bible <laughs> kill all the lawyers yeah <laughs> No, that's Shakespeare. I'll just get all, I'm going to get all... I'm <laughs> no, I'm I'm, not really and I don't want to be I heartless. I don't want to be heartless yeah. because uh, absolutely yeah. it's a terrible thing for the individuals involved. <laughs> uh, but companies, especially a company with, what, 80,000 employees? Um, no, it's, it's more like 120-something. Yikes. It? Yeah, yikes. Yeah. So, I mean, a 1,000 yeah. right? a 1, people uh, out of work is um, oh, such a yeah. small fraction. On top of 8,700 from earlier this year That's a, that hurts so. a little more yeah that that, that 8700 was tough because obviously a lot of those people were ex nokians and that right thanks that was so awful how that happened but yeah i mean i i think they're just um cleaning up at this point yeah 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 and i hope all of those people find great uh, actualizing jobs and are much happier and finally can get out of the pacific northwest where it rains every freaking day <laughs> <laughs> It's a nice place to live. Okay, you, you so I so like I've it. heard. I like it. <laughs> no, um, I love it up there, there actually, but not there it's, anymore. Yeah, I just I would love that in a while. If my wife can't, wife doesn't like the weather. Little sun once in a while. That's, That's what you get. What's your problem? <laughs> Seattle's <laughs> a beautiful exactly. city. It really is. Once every seventy six days, Leo. It's enough. Yeah. I couldn't do it's it. Just, listen, UV is dangerous. People don't oh, understand. Don't get me wrong. I go to LA and I go, what's that fireball in the sky? That thing is horrible. Yeah. Turn it off. Turn it off. I, I, that's why I chose to live right where I do because it's just nicely where it's a little rainy today. It's the Goldilocks part of the country. Yeah. We're going to get a teaspoon of water this winter. It's going to be fabulous. <laughs> oh, man. By the way, if that happens, I'm going to be really unhappy. My dad, who is a geologist, retired geologist, <laughs> sent us all emails saying, Get your flood insurance. Get your landslide insurance. Really? Yeah. It's going to be an awful winter, and you better be prepared because uh, the El sure. Nino, baby, it's going to be wet. Mm. Hopefully it, it won't be as bad as It hasn't happened yet. hasn't happened yet. 
Um, uh, let's do a let's do a timeout. <laughs> you go to that corner, Paul. You go to that mm. corner, Mary Jo, and I will do an ad. And then uh, when we come back, more fabulous stuff from the Windows Weekly team, Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley. I want to tell you about uh, in investing, and I am not the king of investment. In fact, we, I always say, I'm not going to tell you what stocks to buy. I don't buy tech stocks. In fact, all my money um, is, uh, is uh, you know, kind of in retirement. And I don't want to, I don't want to, I'm not, a, I don't play the stock market. I believe in long-term investment. But there's a problem. Even if you're doing long-term investment, who are going to manage that? You know, I, I'm one of those guys. Oh, I'll do that. I'll do that. Every quarter, I'll log in and rebalance and make sure everything's going great. And Yeah, no. Or you go out and you hire somebody. And first of all, can you trust them? And then second of all, you're going to pay like 1% to 3% a year uh, for on everything you got under management. Not to mention the fees for transactions and hidden fees and stuff. It's just, it's, it's, a, it's a racket. That's why I was so thrilled when I found out about Wealthfront. Wealthfront is doing automated trading for long-term. This is not day trading. For long-term investments, whether it's your retirement, your uh, you know house fund, uh, your emergency fund. But they do it automatically. They're automatically rebalancing your portfolio. They're automatically reinvesting your dividends. They're doing very sophisticated stuff that no one does, but a computer can do, like tax loss harvesting. Directs in, direct indexing, and it's under the guidance of uh, the smartest people uh, on uh, on Wall Street. The guys who wrote the books, and there was a book I read as a, um, a young man that really influenced me and 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 kind of opened my eyes about investment. If you go to Wealthfront, I'm gonna do that right now. dot com uh, slash windows, you can find out more about this, and you'll see uh, Burton Malkiel who wrote the Random Walk Down Wall Street, amazing book. And Charles D. Ellis, who wrote Winning the Losers Game, uh, they're on the team that, that puts this software together. So the software is doing smart stuff, really smart stuff um, with your money and maximizing your, uh, your returns while lowering your tax bill. I just It's so impressive. In fact, it's done so well. Oh, did I mention... <laughs> By the way, the fee for this, less than one quarter of 1% a year, 25 basis points. And there are no commissions, no hidden fees, no additional charges. That's it. And I say less than because when you go to wealthfront.com slash windows, you can invest up to $15,000 without any fee at all for life. The beginning investment is 500 bucks. I've heard from many people who've heard these ads and have said, wait a minute. And they've put, put some money in. They said, boy, I wish I put more in. This is incredible. Even in these downtimes, doing it right is great. They'll ask you, if, by the way, you could get your free uh, portfolio right now without any investment if you go to wealthfront.com slash windows. You'll answer a few questions about your time frame, your risk aversion or, uh, or tolerance. And uh, they'll set you up with a free portfolio so you see exactly what they would invest. And that's one of the nice things. Their software uh, is optimizing your investment for the best risk-adjusted return, net of taxes and fees. And you can see every trade they make on your behalf right there in your dashboard, on your desktop, with a mobile app. So there's no mystery about this. And it's so affordable. We're talking less than 5 bucks a month to invest $30,000. And as I said, your first $15,000 free forever. Wealthfront.com. Slash Windows, three billion dollars in client assets now. It's grown more than uh, two thousand percent in the last two years because it's such a great idea. Wealthfront.com/slash Windows. We thank them for their support of uh, Windows Weekly. For compliance purposes, I have to tell you, Wealthfront Incorporated is an SEC registered investment advisor. Brokerage services are offered through Wealthfront Brokerage Corporation, member FINRA and SIPC. This is not a solicitation to buy or sell securities. Investing in securities involves risks, and there is the possibility of losing money. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. Please visit Wealthfront.com to read their full disclosure. Paul Throt, Mary Jo Foley, enjoying the Vegas weather. I hear it's very nice, pleasant in Vegas. Oh, is there weather here? I <laughs> <laughs> they don't want you to know, do they? No clocks. <laughs> 
Uh, no, yep. no, you know, you can't tell what's going on outside. They want you to stay inside. Enjoy the fine gaming. Yes. <laughs> Are you going to do any shows? MGM Grand has a has a great uh, Cirque du Soleil show there. You should go see. Yeah, Kai, I've already, I've seen that in the past, but I don't have to, I don't know Mary Jo's no. time. I don't know. I'm not going to have time no on time. this trip to do that. No time. Yeah. No time. Um, Julie Larson Green going yep. back to office. Is that right? She's back. Yeah. Yep. She. So Julie Larson Green has been the chief experience officer in Microsoft's application and services group for the past year or so. And as of this week, she also is now going to be again going back to office and heading up office engineering. Uh, so that was a job she had. At, I, I don't know if she ever actually headed up office engineering, but she was she was on the office team for ages. She worked on Office XP, Office um, 2003, 2007. She did the ribbon. Um, so yeah, she's now go going to go back and, and manage that team in addition to staying the chief experience officer. So she's she has had a lot of different jobs in the past, I'd say two to three years, maybe a little longer. She was on Windows, she was on devices. Um, she's kind of been here, 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 there and everywhere, but now back to office. So yeah, it's part of these. Uh, she's there's beloved. a bunch of, she, she is very well liked by people who, yeah. Uh, who've worked with her who say she has a, a good uh, ability to organize people and get people working together in teams. Oh, That's kind of her yeah. skill. I've heard that from a lot of people that yeah. they really, people have worked with that really like Julie. They do. Yeah. Uh, some other, some other uh, moves in the reorg. Uh, what, another interesting move is when Microsoft bought Accompli, the email application vendor back at love. the end of last year. Yeah. yeah. Ha Javier Soletro, is that his name? Soletro? Uh, Soltero, he was I think. Soltero. He was the CEO of Accompli, and now he is heading up Outlook for all of Microsoft. Like yeah, he's Soltero. Mr. Outlook yep. at the company. Uh, and Microsoft said today that they're taking another ac acquisition that they had made earlier this year, Sunrise, which uh, did a calendar app that was well liked, I think on iOS and Android both. And they're going to merge that into Outlook. Oh, so um, at some point in the near term, uh, well, I shouldn't say near term, at some point in the future, once Microsoft has taken all of the Sunrise capabilities from calendaring and put those into these Outlook mobile apps, they're going to discontinue Sunrise as a standalone app. So oh, the new- no. <laughs> yeah, they are. They are. Well, sorry, but they, but they, you know, I this makes sense. I use it on iOS, I use it everywhere. Yeah. But but they're going to put it put the features that you have in Sunrise into Outlook. So do you do you use the Outlook I mobile app? Freaking hate Outlook. You hate it. Okay, well. No, I like then, Outlook uh, on iOS. Well, the mobile app, I don't know what that. Oh, for iOS is fine. Right. Yeah, but I don't right. like this trend toward putting a calendar in. Mush, you're getting peanut butter in my chocolate. I don't want the calendar in my email. It's too. <laughs> I. Uh, it's fair to. By the way, I actually find this to be a little strange because Microsoft's mobile app story, for the most part, is about going the opposite direction. I know. And Outlook is the one where they're just kind of still jamming it together. I tried I, on the Surface Book. I installed yeah. Outlook. I set it up. The big Outlook, and it's right. just yep. too, it's not right for me. I understand if you're on an Exchange server, and you, you know, there's lots of advantages to that. Uh, but I don't. I so I put Thunderbird on. I want a simple. Although ironically, even Thunderbird now has a calendar module built into it. Yeah, uh, I guess there's oh, be like uh, what are they going to call that now? Communicator? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what are you kidding me? Boom, 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 boom. What was the stand? They had a standalone calendar one time. Remember? Uh, yeah, this no, is no, lightning. Um, it's called lightning, but it. Uh, I know what you're talking uh, about. Uh, something else. Yeah, uh, yeah, I can't remember the name of it. But yeah, I can't either. Uh, anyway, so okay, so Sunrise standalone is dead. Not yet. Well, not, not, not yet. Going to be dead. It's, 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 you know what? Remember when they came out with a Compli slash Outlook and they said, look, right. we have all these other Outlook apps, OWA for whatever and Outlook.com app, and we're going to get rid of those apps as the Outlook app incorporates all of their functionality. Mm -hmm. They're doing the same thing with Sunrise. Um, this, I guess, I, I'm just downloading it now, but uh, the iOS version already has some Sunrise elements to it, apparently, in the new update that came out today. The Android app is getting them in November. But here's the really good news. They're going to update Outlook on Windows phones as well. And that's something they've never talked about before because the big question here was there are some, some elements that are similar, but the Outlook app on Android and iOS, or the same app, 
And the one on Windows slash Windows Phone is completely different. And they both have their own merits and so forth. But it seems like when you have this one team doing them all, they should be the same as much as possible. And it looks like they're going to move in that direction. So I we'll see that, what well, that means. I think, right. The blog post today was a little murky about that. They just said, and we're <laughs> yes, going to update Outlook on Windows Phone. And it didn't say if you'd get any of the Sunrise yeah. kind of functionality. No, it did not. It That's true. That's true. If it would be the same code base as the iOS and Android apps. It is the right same now, team, though. It is not. Same yeah, and it seems like they should. I'm just looking at the app. I, I don't, honestly, this looks like the app already looked. I don't know what they changed. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Well, we'll see. Yeah, today today they updated. They're starting to roll out the update for Outlook on iOS. Android is not till November, early November. Mm -hmm. Windows Phone sometime in November is what they said. Well, actually, I think there was an, uh, an Outlook mobile app update on Android today. It just didn't incorporate the Sunrise stuff. Right. Right. It has other yeah. other changes. Other things. Okay. I think. So, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Leo. It's okay, Leo. <laughs> He's sobbing. Leo, just before. wait a year. It's all going to change again. Well, it will. <laughs> yeah, the, good, the good news you know? is there are other uh, apps. What uh, was the Mozilla Technology standalone? Sun, sun, it, was some, it, was, it was actually called Sun something. It wasn't Sunrise. Oh. It was called Sun something. It was a standalone calendar. Same technology used in Firefox and Thunderbird. It wasn't Sunrise, was it? Lightning. It's bugging me. I can't think. Of it. Yeah, it's before Sunbird. before Lightning. Lightning's the one Sunbird. that's in there now. Sunbird. Sunbird. Was there a sun? There was a songbird. Yes, there was. Sunbird. No, Sunbird. S -U -N -B -I -R. I bet Sunbird's it. And that was a calendar, right? Yep. Isn't that funny? Okay, I, 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 I use that because there's Thunderbird. Boom. And their songbird is their music thing. So Thank you for bringing it back it to makes Microsoft. Sense that the <laughs> yeah, she binged it. She binged it. That's I good. binged it. I'm I'm living with Bing, not happily, uh, but I'm living with Bing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so you want to hear an interesting thing about my plane flight? And this was very odd, and I I was curious why this happened. So I was using GoGo -Go in flight, Surface Book. Um, I. I have my default search engine set to Chrome. So I was doing a lot of searches and every time I searched on GoGo in flight with Google Chrome, um, I could not get any results. Like it would just keep going and going and never return a result. I switched to Bing and I was getting results like in less than a millisecond. And Why? whose fault is that? I'm, I don't know. Whose fault is that? I don't think it's Google's. What airline were you on? Do you, was it like a Microsoft partner? Virgin or some kind? America. Just, I, I I, it was a very you know what I find frustrating? I'm trying to change the default search in, in Microsoft Edge. And <laughs> Good luck. Well, it, it gives you some choices. Bing weird choices. or YouTube. Oh, okay. No, so, the, okay. Nice. Uh, Thank you. In the, was that Edge or something <laughs> else? No, in the fall update, they're, they're going to fix that so you can... They act like you can you change it. <laughs> they act like you got a choice. Wait, let me let me look at just just to make sure that I'm. Uh, is it? It's an advanced settings because who would want to change their search yeah. provider? Uh, I, don't know, I can't even find it now. So, um, yeah, I think it was I think it was an edge, but I can't. But it was like what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, change search in the address bar with Bing. Change, uh, choose one. Uh, Bing default. Sure. There's no other. That's it. Okay. <laughs> so at least I had YouTube on the. This is the uh, threshold uh, too. I used to have YouTube. Now I only have there Bing. Some, there were some weird options in there before. Bing. Um, choose one: Bing or Bing. Yep. I, I guess I'll. So. I'll choose Bing. Maybe you'll go with Bing. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice that Microsoft doesn't have a monopoly anymore. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Right. They could do stuff like that. I'm fine. I'm oh, living with it. It's not horrible. It's uh, you know, it's a search engine. I was having, I, I was enjoying the results that were returned yeah, yeah. in my searches. I was. They were working. I feel like they, you know, they're probably very similar, right? They're not so much difference. I like some I of the features getting... that Google has added to search beyond search. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but those are also probably uh, highly illegal, monopolistic yes. things. <laughs> I shouldn't enjoy those. So I'm just... You're I'm just, referring to shopping results? Yeah, or, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It looks like you're shopping for something on Amazon. Would you like to save $3? Well, interestingly, mm -hmm. when you do uh, search for flights in uh, on Google, 
because they bought ITA, they will actually, in the search results, give you, you know, if you just do SFO to, you know, to JFK, sure. they'll give you all the flights and you click a link and it sends you to the shopping and all of that stuff, yeah. which is why I'm surprised you, you have people, trouble with flight information on yours. Do people actually search for flights that way, do you think? Um, yeah, it's kind of weird, isn't it? To mm. kind of like just Google. I mean, it's like, you know, Google when was JFK Abraham Lincoln to, born? Yeah. What's the know. capital of Massachusetts? I'd like to book a flight to San Francisco. Yeah. These don't seem like the same kinds of questions. Yeah. They'd like you to do that more often. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, so if I go to Google.com, all right, they're saying in the chat room, oh, well, the problem is you're not on Google.com. Go to Google.com. And now, thank you, and now, and now if I go to Settings, Advanced, <laughs> Search. That's obvious. And now it gives me, now it does. Oh, it discovered. Oh, it discovered Google. <laughs> Congratulations, Edge. You found uh -huh. Google. So, yes, you can do that. Uh, this, is, uh, this is awesome. Thank you. What a tip. So if you're on the Google page, it'll, it'll then discover it. And I can set that as That's, default. That is funny. That makes sense. So now if I went to DuckDuckGo, I presume the same thing had happened, right? Let's see. And once it discovers it, does it remember it? Or do you have to go back to have it discover Whoa, what's going on now? I'm getting a video. Whoa, stop it. It really wants you to do this. <laughs> it's saying, come on, you want to annotate, don't you? Not really. I'm just using the internet right now. Thank you. Oh, no, it remembers no. it, and you can search from that homepage. Forget it. I don't know what's going on. Google, uh, when you do this, would really like you to go to get Google Chrome, by the way. They oh, yeah, their little... they're all, everybody's doing it. Apple does the same thing with Safari. You sure you don't want to use Safari? Safari? Oh, yeah, see, so it does remember that Google was there, and now it's giving me DuckDuckGo, so I could have that, too. Okay, go. that's a good tip. Thank you, chat room. That actually is a good tip, because that's not obvious at all. <laughs> no, how would that's, you know? That's right. amazing. Yeah. It, uh, discover, oh, look, look what I found. There's this thing called Google. Wow! And I only had to go to settings, advanced settings to find it. <laughs> While on that exact page. Wow! Jeez. Yeah. I, I can't. You thought the Microsoft antitrust trial was funny as it was. Imagine this little conversation. We think this is discoverable. So cloud and engineering also a little bit reorganized? Yeah, yeah a little reorg there too this, this past week. Um, nothing too major. They combine some of their uh, data analytics teams with the SQL Server teams, which makes a lot of sense. Put all your database related stuff together. Windows Server sitting inside with cloud now. So Bill Lang, a longtime Microsoft uh, Windows Server guy, is now reporting to Jason Zander. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of things like that, kind of tweaks and adjustments. Uh, but very interesting that all this enterprise software that Microsoft has, they're now sitting in the same teams with their cloud uh, equivalents. Hmm. So yet more cloud washing. Mm, cloud washing. Cloud washing. I think you've and, coined oh, um, a term. What does that mean? We, no, I'm just, I'm just using that term <laughs> to mean the cloud, the cloud team is taking over all pretty much. And, you know, Microsoft knows that a lot of people will continue to use enterprise software, especially in hybrid kind of configurations going forward. But as we always say, everything's cloud first with those guys now. And even even down to the organization of, of how their various teams are structured. I'm a cloud watcher. I'm a cloud watcher. Watching the cloud walk by. <laughs> it's like a Kate Bush song. It does sound it, like it. <laughs> Oh, and Julia White, who I think Paul knows fairly well. Yep. Uh, yeah. She's, she, I know. She moved along. Julia White was, uh, if you ever saw all these Microsoft shows this year where there was a woman on stage um, who did these amazing demos around Office 365 and a lot oh, of enterprise. Oh, yeah. Enterprises. She was good. I liked her. She's really Short good. red she hair. Has, love yeah, the yeah, jacket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember her. now that. moved from um, Office to Cloud also. So she's going to be working now uh, more around Azure and things like right. that so and she is now thus dead to me no, I'm just <laughs> oh, no she, i have no, no interest she's, awesome. I'm, I'm, None at all. No, she's, she's great yeah so uh, you know after all these re mini reorgs this week my question is so what happened in windows and devices we know joe b 
is taking a sabbatical. I know, or sad. He's, he's going to sail around the world yeah. for a while. <laughs> but um, we don't really know what else happened in Windows and Devices. So if anyone listening knows, we, we always have our ears open for tips about what's going on over there. If there was any reorging or new people right. in power we should know about. Do you think uh, Joe B's decision to go at this time was related? I don't know. To The timing stuff? was right around the Interesting. same Time. Yeah. Mm. I guess there's no good time for a reorg. <laughs> right. You know, right? I mean, there's no appropriate. I mean, you know, Windows 10 to ship, that was a big deal. You know, that would yep. make sense for Joe. I get it. Uh, yep. mm. Did you go? Oh, you did go. Did you hear Pitbull? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I, see that picture of you with hanging out no, with Pitbull. I thought yet, that was going to so, happen. This week, the Microsoft store in New York City opened for business. And yes, I did go. They gave me, um, the week before, a chance to go see it before any people were in there, a private tour. And then um, I went to the actual opening, which was a madhouse, complete madhouse. The Pitbull was the concert ticket they were giving away. And they told me if I wanted to come back later that night and go to Rockefeller Center that they, I could go meet Pitbull <gasps> myself. When you didn't? You know, I... <laughs> It would have been a good photo op, but me and Pitbull. Oh my wanted, god! What if it. you? What if it was you and Pitbull ice skating at Rockefeller Center? <laughs> oh my god! You know, like service books. As we oh, yep. that'd be awesome. You know, I mean, you're kind of. You know, I, I was no. looking at Taylor Swift's Instagram. <laughs> as as one would. As one does, and uh, <laughs> yep. there's a picture of her with Pitbull. Oh really? Sure. And I thought. <laughs> He has it very... looks like she's welcoming her grandfather. Yeah. He's <laughs> first of all, she's like four feet taller than he is. Well, and second yeah, of all, he has right. the strangest arm hair I've ever seen. He, I find this man to be incredibly creepy. So I don't think you missed a whole lot, Mary Jo. I think I was okay. Yeah. Yeah. That said, you might have hit the it store, off. You know, you don't know. The store that <laughs> I think we all need a pilgrimage to the store because it's yeah. a very Is it nice, nice store. I saw the pictures. It looks good. I would have gone, yep. but I had been to New York 117 times yeah. this year already. Yeah. Yep. Panos Panay and Kevin Turner, were who's they the there? COO, were cutting the ribbon nice. together with the giant scissors. Oh. Yeah. I did that good. when we opened yeah. our studio. We had giant scissors. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, you can rent them. What, what happens? It turns out there's a place the you can go. After no, you rent them. You rent them. We didn't oh, buy them. We rented them. You can rent giant scissors because I said to the staff, I said, staff, I want to have a ribbon cutting, but I need giant scissors. Did they give you the sharp one or the, like the safety scissors? No, they were safety scissors. <laughs> well, it's know. very token. You can't, yeah. you go yeah. like, sh 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 nothing happens. Yeah, it, just bend, it bends it. Yeah. Instead of yeah. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> We should have probably specified I want to actually cut something with this. Yeah, yes. we get a serrated edge on this yeah. thing. Right. Um, just reading the Motley Fool's review of the Service Book Pro. On the mm -hmm. Service Book. Why does the yeah, Motley the Fool have a review? Of yeah, the good question. Book? Mm -hmm. Everybody now who got one. Oh, by the way, if you went to the Microsoft New York store opening, yeah. they had so many Surface Books in stock. People who were waiting way at the back of the line were getting in and buying them. Oh. Which was surprising. That's good to know because it's back ordered it, yeah, online, right? Yep. Daniel Rubino even went in there and bought one because he didn't he didn't get one on the loaner list for some reason. Mm. And so he he actually ended up buying one in the store that day. I yep. couldn't be happier. I know it's pricey. And uh, certainly uh, there are less expensive and very nice Windows laptops. I have this Dell 13, for instance. But I am saying I, I've been really happy. There is something about it. I, I yeah, like it a lot. There's something about it. Yeah. It's, it's, I'm definitely going to keep using it. It's I, I, dead sexy. Yeah. There's something good going on there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do they need, and you asked this question, so I'm just repeating it. Do they really yeah. need brick and mortar stores? Is that... How it's really been a boon for Apple, contrary to what I believed. I mean, I'm you know, Gateway. Oh, just everyone, no, every, store. everyone thought that was a bad yeah. mistake. Yeah, and Apple's just everyone. done it right. And of course, Microsoft's kind of copying the Apple idea. It's open. They've got nice. What do you mean by that? Oh, they're they're, they're totally copying. It. <laughs> they admit they're copying. They In what it. way? Hey, it works. Why not? You know. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> if think? it works, why not? Um. So th this is, I think, their hundred and tenth or so 
Microsoft brick and mortar store. Um, most yeah. of them have been on the West Coast. And I have people asking me all the time, like, why do you even need a Microsoft store? And <laughs> I'll tell you, in New York, you do need one in Manhattan because where do you go to try to look right. at PCs right. um, side by side right. if you want to buy one? And they do have other PCs besides Microsoft's own models in there. Um, and so for me, that's oh. going to be fantastic. Um, Spend five just, minutes in the post-apocalyptic nightmare scape that is a Best Buy right. PC Best section, buy. and you know Best why buy in New York. You need Microsoft I, you know, stores. I know, I know in other places, Best Buys are not this, a scary place, but in New York City, they are. <laughs> the, at least the Microsoft store within a store there yeah. are, are kind of scary. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's going to be fantastic. I can bring my laptop, any laptop, not just Microsoft, to the store, have them you know, help me out with problems for free at the answer desk. They have a big community space in there, which I really like. They're going to have kids after school programs and other kind of community groups meeting up in there. And I, I just think it's going to be a, a good place for people. Are they going to make a ton of money there? I, I doubt it. Um, they're on Fifth Avenue and really pricey real estate. They're like three yeah. or four blocks away from the Apple store on Fifth Avenue. Um, I don't know. Even if they don't make money, I think it could still be seen as a loss leader. Or oh, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, you can make a case. Yeah, it, for it's a prestige it's marketing. Location, it, yeah. it comes out of the marketing budget. It doesn't. It does. What I'd like to see is a meaning of lifestyle thing where they're firing cannons across at each other, <laughs> <laughs> grappling but, hooks. <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> 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 they sell other stuff besides Microsoft hardware, right? You, you can see they other do. laptops there. So. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, in it's, fact, it's, well, Microsoft has enough of their own hardware now that you could almost make the case. Yeah. Just a big section for, of that would be great. Yep. You know, there's enough of the whole, it. The whole third floor of the store is a Dell store within the Microsoft store, Whoa. which is right. interesting. And guess who's helping pay the rent on Fifth Avenue yeah, now? Well, there you right. go. Yep. <laughs> so they're subletting. They are, basically. It's, so, it's such a New York City thing to do. <laughs> yeah, I can't even imagine what that store costs them it's it's a five-story building on fifth avenue and 53rd street it's it's like in the most they, prime part of new york city <laughs> by the way did you did you happen to catch they seem to imply that they had made this deal several years ago and were essentially waiting for the previous store's lease to run out that this has been in the plans for a long time yeah uh, i know thought I I, that's, that's how i read it i think what was in the plan was having a new york city store near an apple store and yep. um I don't know this if it was that and... store. Yeah. 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 Okay. But, but yeah, I, I thought that place they had Times Square was great. They should have just kept that. It was an yeah, ideal they, location. They lost the lease on that. And um, then there was a rumor for a while they were going to get the Grand Central location that Apple ended up taking. Um, right. So, That's yeah. a great location. Yeah. Yep. Really interesting. Wasn't it a pop up though in Times Square? It wasn't a. No, it was it an was... actual store. I mean, it was, it was in a, yeah, it was on a corner. Remember it was, um, yeah, it was a building. It was inside a building. It was nice. It was. I, I had heard from some people saying they only took a part partial, a uh, part-time lease on that just to make it a holiday pop-up, but it looked pretty permanent yep. when you went in the store. It was a store where I had to wait in line to, uh, while t Timmy Rella's kids got to go in ahead of me because, yeah. you know, for yeah. some reason they needed to see the store, um, <laughs> but whatever. It was a nice place. So when next time Paul comes, he'll have to come I'm, over. You know, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm going to make a trip. I'll make a trip. Yeah. Actually, I haven't even been to the Apple Fifth Avenue store. So I can do two in one. You could. I have not either, but I will probably not worry about that. And then maybe the maybe <laughs> that bulldozer guy will be there and I can. <laughs> the bulldozer. <laughs> Whatever that guy? Is. That, that guy. Pit bulldozer, yeah. Pitbull's um, older brother. Bulldozer. When do I get Windows 10 in my Xbox uh, One? When is that happening? It's complicated, Leo. Um, over time. Sorry, we're going to try not to put Mary Jo to sleep here for the next few minutes. Um, no, I, like I always say, I like hearing the operating system part of it. Yeah, so the first <laughs> bits of Windows 10 appear in November, on November 12th. That's the new Xbox One experience. It's basically the underpinnings. It's the performance enhancements, the stuff you're seeing like that. I mean, there, there's going to be s subsequent Windows 10-based releases that occur. For example, uh, Cortana is coming to Windows, I'm sorry, to Xbox One in 2016. And we're also going to see, uh, you know, universal apps of some kind will make their appearance at some point on Xbox One next year. But also tied to this, I think, uh, they've never really said this explicitly, but, you know, they figured out how to do Xbox 360 backwards compatibility. And I'm almost positive they're using the Hyper-V technology that's based, you know, that makes Xbox One popular uh, possible already. 
and was based on Windows 8 and will now be based on Windows 10. And I wouldn't be surprised if some of the improvements uh, in Hyper-V in this release have, you know, are what makes this possible. Um, and I, I finally got to test this. I, I, I guess this had been sitting there the whole time. I didn't realize it was there. But if you're on the preview and you've bought digital Xbox 360 games that are compatible already, you can find them in your uh, ready-to-install list on the console, and you can go get them and install them. You can play them now. They, it works fine. Oh, I can't uh, wait. Have, That's awesome. Yeah. It's not a lot of good games yet. Um, there's supposedly going to be a emulation, but it's pretty fast. Well, it, it's emulation is. I'm not even sure if that's the right word. It's 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 virtualization. Right. Um, well, it has to be emulation because the 360 does not have the same. Right. Okay. All right. Fair enough. It's it's a so, right. It's a software machine. Uh, I noticed on the game that I was playing with it, uh, initial boot time's a little slow. It you know I think that's the VM kicking up on or whatever. But um, it's it's it is literally an Xbox 360 in there. I mean, it's funny because. You know, notifications like uh, when you get achievements or if you bring up the Xbox guide or if you type something in on the keypad, it's it's Xbox 360. You know, it's not the Xbox One UI. Um, and it works really, really well. So hopefully we'll see some really good games uh, in November and then, you know, past November. Do, I was going to stream. I launched my, um, my Xbox app on the Surface Book and it saw mm -hmm. my console. But then yep. I said I have to have a joystick paired to the surface uh, yeah, that, that's true you know yeah yeah another so uh, i bought a second one for this purpose but uh, can i could, use the xbox one controller or yeah the only problem with doing that is you're going to have to reassign it to oh, the device it every time you move the it it's kind of a pain. controller yeah, yeah. Yeah. so is it it's bluetooth a... just any bluetooth controller or how's that how did how, how do it work no it's you have to use an xbox well it's an xbox one controller oh actually so I buy sorry, a separate you know what i i don't want to i don't want to speak out of hand it's possible that you could leave the xbox one controller connected to the xbox one and still use it because it's just streaming the video so actually mm. you probably don't have to you could probably just use the controller okay i haven't tried that because actually know, that should, i'm gonna probably be uh, on vacation for the next few months with uh Right, right. Fallout well, of course, and... you would need to be near the Xbox One for this to work, but I think that would work actually, because you just—it's—it's it's just coming off the Xbox One. Anyway. I was going to get Fallout Four for uh, uh, the desktop, and then I thought, yep. well, I'll just play it off my Xbox One because I already bought it on the Xbox One. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Be fun. Yep. I'm excited. Uh, Halo Five. Have you played that? That came out yesterday. Is that just started? Yeah. I, of course, now I have to go to Vegas. I can't play it. So, oh! I, I, we, you know. For me, uh, Halo dropped by the wayside because of Call of Duty. And um, the first few Halo games, Halo, Halo 2, and Halo 3, and actually ODST, I played, the, I played those single-player campaigns, I mean, several times each, you know, on different skill levels and going back to find things I missed. And I really, really liked those games. And then, I don't know, I kind of got lost in Halo. And I think part of it was just, uh, you know, how good the Call of Duty games were. But uh, this game, I have to say... Is is super impressive, um, single player and multiplayer, and I really feel like they've learned a lot from rival games that do, did some things better. Um, it's it's just so tight and so well done. It's beautiful. It sounds great. The music is awesome. It's really good. And so there's no there's no doubt I'm going to go back and go through this. And I Halo Four I basically skipped out on. I, I kind of booted it up. I played around for a few minutes and it just didn't do anything for me. But this is just a level of Christmas, a crispness that hasn't been around in a while. So it looks awesome to me. Yeah. See, I passed on it because I bought that whole Super Halo kit of, with all yeah, the versions. Yeah, yeah. And I played it for a little bit and it got me nauseous and I thought, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> sure. And I'm getting Fallout 4. Yep. But yep. It, so I'm not sure, but now I, you're not the only one. A lot of people are saying, hey, this is the best Halo in a long time. Well, one of the neat things that's happening on the Xbox One, I don't really have this on the note in the notes, but it's related to the Xbox 360 compatibility is that some games and, and third party developers can do this as they wish. You buy an Xbox One game and they can give you the Xbox 360 version because it's compatible now on the Xbox One. You kind of get it for free. So, for example, if you bought uh, Fallout 4 on Xbox One, which I think you said you did. You also get Fallout 3 for Xbox 360, which will work on your Xbox One. Oh, oh. Yeah. So, like, uh, I know Gears of War is like this, the uh, new version for the Xbox One. You get all of the Xbox 360 games. I think there were four or five of them. There might have been five, four or five. I saw I don't a remember. tweet, and I didn't understand because I looked and I looked, and it yeah. didn't say that. Yeah, all there's right, a few others. I can't I remember. It. Oh, Rainbow okay. Six is another one. Um uh -huh. Rainbow Six Siege, I think, is the new game. And when you buy that, you get the old, uh, I think there's two of them, uh, Xbox 360 games. By the way, those are awesome games. 
Um, so if you like Rainbow Six, there's like three great games for sixty yeah. bucks. That's kind of an amazing deal. Yeah. So um, that's some neat stuff. And so that's kind of a perk of the 360 compatibility, you know, functionality. Actually, while I'm on the topic, I should say there's another perk, which is, you know, I talk about this uh, deal, uh, uh, games for gold thing that they have, and oh, every month that. they give away yeah. at least two games, right, yeah. for each console. Um, going forward, starting with November. Every Xbox 360 game will be backwards compatible on the Xbox One. And so if you have an Xbox One, you're actually going to get four free games every month now. Uh, and they'll all work on the Xbox One. So this is all coming on the 11th? On um, the 12th. 12th. Sorry, 12th. Yep. Um, great. And yeah, I'm on the, I think I'm still on the beta. Will I get it a little sooner? Or should I have got it already? Yeah, actually, you have most of this now. Um it's not here. I mean, there should be some slate of Xbox 360 games that po pops up that we haven't seen yet. Um, there's some pretty, there's some okay ones in there, but there's not many. Like Borderlands 2 is in there, and I think Gears of War is in there. Um, yeah, I think you should you, you should have most of it already, actually. Oh. I think. I can't remember. Maybe I turned off the beta because I was getting annoyed by all the updates. Yeah, the, I know. Every time you turn it on, it's yeah, like here's three point five gigs of data. No, and, and that's how I <laughs> hope watch you didn't TV. want to play a game. Yeah, <laughs> you know, play a yeah, game. Exactly. I want to watch TV. TV. Please. Is, oh, is your favorite show starting? Yeah, you got to download this first. <laughs> Can. <laughs> yep. Sorry. Sorry. Yep. 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 Uh, all right, let's take a break. We're, they're going to go to the back of the book in just a bo just a moment with Paul Thorat and Mary Joe Foley because they got to get going. I'm going to give you an hour to get across the MGM Grand to your panel. <laughs> it might take us that long. <laughs> it might. Oops. Stay away from the flying monkeys. You know, <laughs> back when MGM, I guess MGM lost the rights to Wizard of Oz or something, so it's no longer the Wizard of Oz Hotel, but it was the Emerald City, and it was the whole thing. Yeah. Well, MGM was the the company behind it. Right, they made Wizard the movie. Uh, in, the, in the MGM Grand store, every day, the son of L. Frank Baum would sit there signing Wizard of Oz books mm. every wow. day, like for years. Wow, when yeah. was this? Well, you like know. how long ago are we talking? Uh, you remember Comdex? <laughs> a, <year. laughs> okay. a while ago. A while we ago. can't forget that. Was shit. Early two thousands, probably. Yeah. Wow, that's actually kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> Today, what you have at the MGM is the CSI experience. Really. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> This is very That's strange. Weird. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of uh, a lot of crass commercialism going on here, Leo. I'm not sure if you're, are you looking that for Vegas, bodily but... fluids with UV light, that kind of thing. Ugh, what are, probably, what are you... yeah. <laughs> I, just, I don't know. I was saying, like, what is this? The, the experience is you sit on the couch and drink beer and watch TV. I don't understand. I know. I want to have the experience of of like going into a flop house and trying to figure <laughs> out. Yeah. Right. I want to rough up a witness. <laughs> <laughs> you know, kind of a potentially illegal, but but getting the job done they, kind of they thing. They do that and they take the Star Trek experience out of the old Hilton. What's wrong yeah. with this world? Uh -huh. Right. Hmm. But you can still s pretend to fall off the stratosphere tower, and that's always a, I'm a absolutely blast. not doing that. There is Lisa, no every way. time we go to Vegas, she says, You're, we're doing this. I said, no. no. Oh, I've okay. shot to the top of that thing one time and... I don't know how astronauts no. do what they do, but that's never happening again. That's different. You're going to the moon. I would do that. <laughs> You're going to the I'm moon. I'm not dying on the yeah, Vegas just, Strip. I'm sorry. Yeah, exactly. You're landing somewhere in Vegas next to a McDonald's or something. Last time we were there, she ziplined down Fremont Street. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah, I what? saw you could do that My now. wife is yeah. a daredevil. Oh, man. Jeez. <laughs> she had to buy. <laughs> she had to buy underwear because she was wearing a dress. And her right. and she was wearing underwear, but it what but probably not suitable for zip lining down Fremont Street. So she got like We've you know, all been there, Leo. Yeah, you know how that is. <laughs> yep. Uh, she still has That's it. It amazing. says Vegas on the butt. Yep. Sure. Of course it does. <laughs> right. Right, right. I've That's probably great. revealed too much. I will probably not zip line down <laughs> Fremont Street either, but it actually looked fun. And you have two levels. Yeah, you can go the this low slow, or you can go the high fast. She went the high fast, of course. Yeah. I. She, I, <laughs> I I love her dearly, but she has. Uh, you seem uh, genuinely conflicted she's about an this. Ad adrenaline junkie, and I'm the opposite. Yep. Yeah. Sure. She loves this stuff. Right. Mm. Uh. <laughs> I hear her laughing in the other room, but I don't think it's about this. <laughs> Our show today is brought to you by ZipRecruiter.com. 
Man, I love ZipRecruiter. If you got to do some hiring, if you're the person in charge at your business, you know what a pain in the tuchus it is. And yet there is literally no more important job in a company than hiring the right people. That is what your company's made up of. It's made of people. And the right person can just uh, elevate your company. The wrong person could just drag it down. And, of course, the worst part is you're trying to do all this when you're, you know, short, short-handed. ZipRecruiter makes it easy. You don't have to post to a single job board. You post to all the job boards, 100-plus boards, with one click of the mouse. You'll also get access to the nearly 6 million current resumes. You're going to be posting on all the social networks, Craigslist and Twitter and uh, Facebook, too. I mean, you're really you're putting the word out, which gives you a much higher probability of finding the right one. On the other hand, it also increases the number of applications you're going to get. And you may say, well, I don't want my inbox filled with that. I don't want my phone ringing all day. No, no, no. It all goes into the ZipRecruiter interface, which makes it easy to screen out the ones you don't want, rank the ones you like. And hire the right person fast. I mean, within a day or two, you will be set. 400,000 businesses use ZipRecruiter. And you could try it for free right now. We got an email from uh, Scott, who's a happy ZipRecruiter client. He said, quote, the recruiting process used to be so painful. Before I'd post to several places, I'd get a million resumes, only a few responses from qualified candidates. It was torture. But with ZipRecruiter, we post once. We get qualified candidates in one easy to review place. And this is the this I want to just underline this. We've hired some of our best employees using ZipRecruiter. It's all about getting the right candidate fast. Go to ziprecruiter.com slash windows. Ziprecruiter.com slash windows. Look at the they they're adding features all the time too. Look at this. Post and hire the right candidate. Then they'll back you up with the offer letter, and the HR docs, and you can even enroll them in benefits. This is all in one click. How Four days free when you go there right now. You're going to love this. This is so cool. This is new. I haven't seen this. Automate your I-9s, W-4s, custom forms, background checks, real-time process tracking, secure storage solutions. Wow. you got to love these guys. They're really knocking it out of the park. ZipRecruiter.com. Slash windows. All righty. Let's see here. Uh, Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley, what we like to uh, call the back of the book, jokingly, because <laughs> there is no book and there is no back. But it is the part of the ironic. show. Where it is ironic. <laughs> it's a harken back to the days when you used to get your computer information on dead trees. Yeah. Yep. Now you get them on dead bits. <laughs> By the way, uh, you probably uh, were aware of the fact that Google is adding podcasts to Google Play. It'll be I did on see all that. Android devices. Yeah. I'm you very guys intrigued to see how they do this. are already in. Nice. Oh, so you knew about this. Uh, yeah, I couldn't talk about it. We were under an yep. undisclosure. I, I, in fact, I didn't even know all about it because uh, I didn't want to sign the NDA, but I heard hints. And I okay. had to help them uh, set this up a, I, a few weeks ago. But I've we're been asking about this forever. Like, I, I don't understand how Android for so long has not had a podcast solution well, built third, into the OS. third-party solutions. But oh, this of course. Is a much but I mean, better it's, way to do it. Yeah. And the guy neat. who did Songza is in charge of this, and so they're going to have mm -hmm. like, you want to be uplifted? You want to learn about technology? You know, they have different playlists, and uh, and yeah, we're one of. The, in fact, if you look at the announcement, we're the number one uh, network on there. So uh, yeah, we're nice. absolutely we're all set already. You're in. You don't have yep. to do anything. Good. Um, however, now I want to get your tip of the week, Mr. Paul Therott, and I need this one. <laughs> this one will be quick because I've been giving, giving away half of them during the course of the show. But um, since the Surface Book has come out, I've been writing a Surface Book tip each day. And I'm going to, you know, collect these into like a little complete guide to Surface Book at some point. But if you go to the Surface page on uh, Throt.com, you'll see all the tips I've written so far, and I, I'll have another one today and tomorrow, and we'll do this for a few weeks until I'm I exhausted. I should be reading all of these. In fact, that's you already knew that I would be able to run my 4K mm -hmm. monitor out of mm -hmm. the mini display port. Now, yeah. I have a connector that goes, the uh, the computer has the old-fashioned display port, but I have a mini to full-size display port. I mean, the monitor I'm going to use. That, that'll that work. Yeah, all the adapters work fine. Whatever yeah. you have, it will yeah. go to you know HDMI, yeah. VGA, whatever you got. Yep. And will it give me 60 frames? I know it'll give me 4K. 
That I don't know. I ooh, yeah. Ooh, and I got the dock. I'm so excited. <laughs> I love the dock. It, the dock. It's like the simplest thing in the world. It's so great. You know. So uh, everybody needs to go to therot.com, and uh, if you get a new Surface Book, that's those those tips will all be compiled there. Which means Paul's probably writing a book. Let's face mm -hmm. it. Yeah, this how might be you? a new kind of book. You know how it is. You know how it is with Paul. I'm just really treading water until I get Mary Jo on board for the big book. Okay. Shoot. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we've already agreed to that. Let me just move on to the next thing. <laughs> Software pick of the week. Uh, <laughs> so this morning, you know, I, I, I showed up here in, in Vegas at 4 o'clock in the morning because I'm on East Coast time, and that's what happens. And, you know, I ended up hanging out in the NGM for a while. I had breakfast and everything, and I, sh I got there really early. And... I was talking to some of the guys who were there, and then Scott Hanselman walked in, and he was kind of checking out my uh, Surface book. He hadn't seen one before, and we were kind of talking about it. And he mentioned uh, a solution which some of you might have already heard about that he makes, and uh, I honestly had never heard of this, and it's one of the most awesome things I've ever seen in my life. And it basically combines um, iOS on an iPhone typically, right, with Siri, with Azure on the back end, and a native Windows app. And what you do is you dictate into the iPhone. What? And it comes out in whatever app is currently focused in Windows. And it is amazing. Is it using And you should watch Siri just, yeah, watch the, watch, yes, it's amazing. Is, yep. Our app works it, you should, well, if you can, play some of this video and listen will, to it. It's, listen it's, to it's, it is astonishing. And my little Scott, right? Yep. Basically, comma, you just start talking, period. You can say anything that you want to, talking directly into your iPhone like I am, period. Nice. A lot of people don't realize is how good iOS dictation is, period. He's and using Siri. Siri. <laughs> so you I asked him about this. I said, I don't understand why you don't do this with Cortana on Windows Phone. And he says, Cortana can't do this. <gasps> It's extremely Why? fast, comma, because... I don't know. He said he went to the Cortana guys and said, you need to... And they said, we just don't see a big use case for this or whatever. And uh, there are some reasons around different things, the like commas and, you know, different things that you would say to get uh, punctuation in there that they didn't feel like that made sense. And he says, it works fine. I don't understand. We don't so he's doing if, it on... Uh, he could do it with Google uh, now, because I, I think he the can, and in there is even better. Means, yeah, he's, gonna, he's probably going to do that uh, uh, on Google now as well. So this is called My Echo. Is it in the store so it's, or... Yeah, it's a two dollar app. You buy it in the iOS store. You download the Windows eight app. Actually, you can do it right from the web. You can do it yourself. You can do it yourself right now. You can test it on the web if you just want to see how it works. Um, it is, it's amazing. It works really, really well. And he was saying, you know, he says, these days uh, when I have a blog post to write, I just walk around the house and talk into my phone. I got, you know, I really love dictation uh, for that kind of stuff, and I, I just kind of got out of the habit of it for a while. Yeah. I was answering emails on my iPad by dictating, and it was so I fast. Yeah, I, there was a period of time, uh, and this really goes back, whenever the first kind of ergonomic keyboards came out from Microsoft, so really, I mean, possibly as long ago as almost 20 years ago, but very early on, I had, um, you know, what do you call that pain in the back of your wrist? You get a um, carpal tunnel carpal type tunnel. pain. And I thought to myself, you know, this is going to be a problem for me because I'm a writer and I need to type, you know, yeah. and, and this is going to happen to me. And I'm, I'm going to be screwed. And I started looking into these solutions at the time. And of course, they were terrible back then. But I always figured the future for me was going to be, at some point, this will become so bad, I'm going to have to move on to voice dictation. Now, of course, what saved me was truly ergonomic keyboards and mice. And like the, you know, I, and I travel with this gigantic mice, mouse that everyone makes fun of. But you know what? Uh, yes, it looks like a softball, but it's really key for me not, you know, to be ergonomically correct. It's hard for me on a kind of a cramped uh, laptop keyboard for a week or two to, you know, it's you can feel it kind of flare up. When I go home, I get the nice big ergonomic keyboard. It's fantastic. And uh, so I haven't had to, but uh, I look at this and I think, you know, that's actually kind of interesting. I mean, I go for walks. You could walk around the neighborhood and take notes. And back home, it's it's blurting into your uh, Word document or whatever. Um, that's really, it's, it's a really neat solution. You should definitely check it out. And so I think it's Echo App. Let me see, where's my note here? Yeah, it's myechoapp.com. Myechoapp.com. Yeah, cool. really, really neat. Cool. Uh, that's nice. I, uh, I'm i going to definitely try that. And I, I want him to do it with Android because I feel like uh, I've had better results with dictation to Android than I have with iOS. Actually, though, that kind of dictation, speech to text is pretty good. It's the uh, answering. I, I mean, he, he demoed Siri. it live for me. He, you know, showed me the video that you just looked at and all that. But it it's pretty amazing. Yeah. You could try your 200 words free. 
Let's see what it works for free. Yeah. yeah, on the web. Yeah, you can try it on the web. Yeah, myechoapp.com. That's how they get you. Yeah, they're pulling me in. But I only have a 200-word blog post. <laughs> your, <laughs> your enterprise pick of the week, Mary Jo Foley. Uh, Enterprise Pick of the Week is SQL Server 2016. We haven't talked a lot about that on Windows Weekly, and we should. Um, today is a big Microsoft database show called SQL Pass. And at SQL Pass, they announced that SQL Server 2016 is now available in CTP 3.0 form, which means Community Tech Preview. So if you want to just go and kick the tires of what the next major version of SQL Server is going to look like. You can go check that out right now. And they've added um, quite a few new features to this particular preview version. They've got um, something they call SQL Server R services, which use the uh, data, database analytics language called R. Um, and that's built right into the database itself. Uh, there's the always encrypted technology, polybase, which uh, involves unstructured and structured data using T-SQL. Um, all of that's built into SQL Server 2016. That, and we know that that version of the product is coming out sometime in 2016. We just don't yet know when. Um, at PASS, Microsoft also announced the public preview of Azure Data Lake Store and Azure Data Lake Analytics. And I know Windows Weekly users have been following along closely with what's <laughs> going on with data lakes. You guys really care about that. And uh, now you can try that technology out in preview. Um, and this is this is the way if you have all, a lot of data um, that's not um, in any particular format, you know, say something you might be collecting for IoT purposes or other purposes like that, you might want to store it in a data lake. Um, so that's out in preview today, SQL Azure Database in memory, OLTP, operational analytics, also out in preview. Paul's ready to pass out now, I see. <laughs> <laughs> I just, so, uh, you really... You're really I, there's just, pushing it's this like, one hard. It's it's tough. It's like there's just so much to talk about with SQL Server, but I'll just leave it there. And um, just if you're if you're interested in it at all at all, you should go check out the blog post that uh, is on the Data Platform Insider blog today. They've got all the features and all the links that you could ever want. There you go. And, and maybe uh, more. Yeah, man, many more, <laughs> many, many, many more. And it is a very special code word today for our Yes. The code code name is really um, a nickname today. The code name of the week is Trey. The reason I picked Trey is today the person who was codenamed Trey, aka Bill Gates, is turning sixty years old. Wow. Believe it or not. Today. Today, October twenty wow. eighth. That's great. Yeah, hard to believe. I remember I met Bill Gates when he was really young, um, in 1984. That was the first time I ever met him. And uh, <laughs> he uh, founded Microsoft when he was 20. Yeah. Uh, and his nickname was Trey because his dad was uh, Bill Gates the second, and so he was the third. That's why he was Trey. Oh, I get it. T Trey is the third. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's yep. great. Yeah. And another birthday coming up that's worth noting on Windows Weekly. Tomorrow, Paul Thorat's birthday. <laughs> oh, that's right. Happy birthday, Paul. I specifically Yay. told you I do not celebrate this birthday. Paul's turning 60 <laughs> as well, which is pretty exciting. What? Yikes. <laughs> no, I don't I'm think I'm just happy there. I'm still ambulatory. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> wait, wait till you get to be my age, Paul. 60 doesn't seem old at all. <laughs> no, I'm never going to reach your age. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Clean living, Paul. That's the secret. <laughs> Don't do it whatever you whatever. Yeah. yeah. So how old are you, Paul? Forty? Uh, <laughs> uh tomorrow I will be forty nine. <gasps> really? Oh, wow. Really? Oh, yeah. you're getting on. The big one. It's what 49? happens. Forty nine, you're not that old. Are you really? I think so. Wow. Yes. <laughs> I, I I sincerely I I thought you were maybe like in your early 40s. That's great. You look well, great. I feel great. like I'm in my early 60s. Yeah. But happy birthday. <laughs> you know, happy birthday. That's great. Okay. And, you know, it's depressing to me when I think I'm only two years younger than Bill Gates. I only have two years to become the richest man in the world. I'm going mm -hmm. to do that as fast as I can. What do you do <laughs> when you are one of the I richest know. men in the world for your 60th birthday? I bet he's going on that zip line here in Las Vegas. I feel like nice. it's something bigger than that somewhere. 
He, uh, I don't know if he still does this. I bet he does. But he used to do every year a big vacation that he'd bring other people on. Oh, really? One year yes. they rented a train that went all the way across China. Oh, wow. And uh, I know because a friend was invited once, and you're required, if you're invited on this trip, to have a presentation. It's kind of like a rolling TED. And each night... No pressure. Yeah. Can you imagine yeah. the pressure? Uh, that, no. Like, the, uh, I mean, uh, you know, I would just say, no, I'm not going to go. But uh, yeah. <laughs> you have to do a presentation for the whole group. Yeah, they went across China in a train, a special car, of course. Um, sure. Some of the other things, I mean, amazing uh, vacations, which, of course, they don't really talk about. You probably mm. knew about it, but... Um, no, I, I've never even heard of this. So, really? So. Oh, yeah. Like, nope. Yeah, quite, um, quite the deal. Maybe yeah. it's secret. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I wasn't supposed to reveal that. <laughs> no, I, I <sighs> Shakespeare. I'm being told now. Shakespeare died at 54, so I've already wow. missed yep. the genius playwright window. But Paul, it's not too late for you. <laughs> I know. I crossed my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> get, get it. Get it right. In. Uh, yeah, I imagine they'll have a massive party, but he's really not a public figure anymore. So, no, uh, not really. He's, yeah. he's like the, you know, he dresses up like Mr. Rogers, plays a game of checkers with his wife, and retires <laughs> with, a, with, an, with an actual cup of tea, you know? Hey. He was, for a while, he would go on these uh, learning vacations, too. You knew about these. Yeah. One, one yeah, year he yeah. brought oh, yeah. uh, the Richard Feynman's Red, Red Book lectures, the, some of the most advanced physics lectures. Out These there. days, he would just cart the guy in and make him give him a lecture on a train in China. I think it was, was he would go with was it Esther Dyson? Who would he go with? He would go with. Uh, oh, no, he you know. went no, with his, Anne, old girlfriend. Was, his old girlfriend. It was Anne. Yeah. Uh, Annie. Yeah. That's, I think you're Winblad, on track. Anne Winblad. Winblad. Yeah. Yep. Uh, right. And yep. even after he was married to Melinda, he he and Anne Winblad would go off on these yeah. uh, on the intellectual yep. vacations. Nothing weird about that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the rich yeah, are not okay. like you and me. No, That's for not. sure. I live in a different world entirely. <laughs> I used to know at one point uh, some of the other trips uh, that Bill uh, took people on. Hmm. And I, I, can't, I can't remember. Uh, I'll have to, I'll have to uh, ask, query my source. And, yes. Uh, get back to you. All right. I'm surprised you hadn't heard of that. No, I, guess, I had I mean, not. it's his personal life. He keeps it very secret, right? Yeah. Beer pick of the week, something we don't keep secret. Exactly. We're, we're lushes. <laughs> In honor of Paul Thorat's birthday tomorrow, oh, I picked yeah. an IPA because he loves IPAs, I've yeah, heard. He's a fan of the hops. <laughs> um, really? I, I really, so, I just feel like you're not getting this whole birthday thing. Right? <laughs> No, actually, I picked a beer brewed in Las Vegas um, because we're here in Las Vegas. It's from a brewery called Big Dog Brews, and this is the Dirty Dog IPA. Yeah, baby. Yep. It's, uh, you know, you don't think of Las Vegas as a craft beer hotbed, no, really but don't. actually, actually, it is becoming one. Mm. And there are a lot of really great craft beer bars in all the hotels now in Las Vegas. People who are beer sommeliers, um, it's a big, big business here. So this one is brewed here. Very nice, um, a fairly hoppy IPA. Nothing too, too crazy, but a nice, a nice choice if you are looking for a Vegas beer. Wow, Dirty Dog IPA from Big Dogs Brewing Company. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how many breweries use dogs, right? Like Lagunitas has a dog mascot. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's very popular. Dogs Laughing love beer. Dogs. Yep. Everyone knows. Everyone knows yeah. that. Yep. Everybody loves Mark Paul Thorat and Mary Joe Foley. In about one hour, they're going to be doing their panel at the um, IT Dev Intersection Conference. Go rush to Vegas. Get <laughs> over Vegas, there. Please. The MGM Grand. Uh, and uh, they will be back next Wednesday, as always, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC. We are. Uh, we, uh, this is confusing. I know a lot of people are starting to watch live and coming in an hour late. Because the U.S. changed when we uh, go to day, uh, standard time, and the rest oh. of the world is not, yeah, or has sort of anyway. In some areas now, they've already gone to standard time, and we have not. But we will. Can we, uh, we collectively, as a uh, as a planet, needs to figure this out. <laughs> this is yeah. this is so stupid. One time zone. It is. When stupid. are we switching? We switch on Sunday, don't we? November one. Do we? Is it this already? Yeah, it could okay, be. Okay, well, if that's the case, then you will not be seen 
at seventeen uh, at uh, eighteen hundred UTC, you'll be seen at nineteen hundred UTC. And people always mm. yell at me when I say that, saying UTC doesn't change. Mm. I know, but we do. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, November 1, yeah. Sunday. Okay, so Sunday our time's changing. So that means I correct myself, 11 a.m. Pacific, that's 2 p.m. Eastern time, that's 1900 UTC on uh, twit.tv slash live. You can also catch it after the fact. If this confuses you as much as it does me, we make on-demand <laughs> versions available. You can listen to whenever the hell you damn hell want to. <laughs> Did I swear enough <laughs> in that one? Uh, that's at twit.tv slash ww or wherever podcasts are aggregated, soon to be on uh, Google Music as well as iTunes and Groove and everywhere else. And, of course, the podcast app on your favorite app uh, phone. Uh, Paul Therott is at therott.com. That's his blog, a place to go to learn about your new Surface book and lots of other stuff. Mary Jo Foley's got the scoops at allaboutmicrosoft.com, her ZDNet blog. Thank you. Have a great uh, rest of your day in uh, Vegas. Enjoy yourself. I'm sorry you can't get to a show, but... It's busy. Yeah. It's so busy. Yeah, got lots it to is. do. Well, yeah. have fun, and uh, we'll talk again next week on Windows Weekly. Bye -bye.